Good evening and welcome back to Shreveport, Louisiana. For the final time this week, we have got a big session of Port ahead of us. We've got two trophies to hand out. We have got the main open and the women's open to conclude over the course of the next four hours or so. Let's a quick, take a quick look at the lineup that we have for you tonight. We are going to start with the two semi finals from the Louisiana Open. Chris Melling will take on Corey Jewell in our first match, and then we will see Tyler Steyer, who just came through that dramatic quarter-final take on Billy Thorpe who has looked so sharp today in the second semi-final. Then we're going to turn our attention to the Women's Open. Their final will see Tiffany Brock take on Michelle McDermott and then of course we will have the Open final as well. So, so much to enjoy over the course of the next few hours. The players are ready, the commentators are ready, so let's get it on. Join us after this short break. Alright guys, we are back. Our first semi-final action match of the day. Corey Duell 
and Chris Melling, Stephen Wyatt, and Cleve Thompson here with you. Cleve, you're back. You, you came to sweat the action, yeah? And, oh, you got to flip it around. <laughs> One second. Oh. Mike GTs, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm back just to uh, watch some of the action. Um, that was a nice break from Corey. He, he um, straight down the straight down the middle, and the the cue ball just sort of um, parked up, literally in the breaking area. Um, so it was a very brilliant controlled cue ball on the break there, which obviously gives him options and looks like a run out here. Um, yeah, this is this is interesting. So our final yeah. four here. Uh, Chris Melling, Corey Duell, and Billy Thorpe, Tyler Steyer. Uh, out of that matchup, you really have a really big dynamic of playing styles. Yeah. Uh, Billy plays a little looser and a little bit carefree, mm -hmm. and, but he plays it very well. Tyler, a very structured style of play. Um, Corey, I think you see that, that structure. And Chris, again, is kind of that free form, you know, nice and smooth style. So. Mm -hmm. There's a chance that all kinds of stuff can happen. Um, I'd love to see just a, a very competitive finals. That's what counts for me. So is he going to bump into the four? Is he going to... Yeah, he should bump into the four. Um, he didn't help his eight ball situation there, but I don't think it's going to be a, a big deal for him. No, I mean, uh, he, he might... When he takes the... Uh, Red eleven, is that the right number? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he might come up on the inside of the um, on the left hand side or he, to play to play the eight in there. Oh, okay, that's a clever shot. Just move the four out of the way. Um, that's a very very good awareness there. Yeah, yeah. Good good uh, understanding yeah. of your surroundings yeah. and what your issues are. Yeah. Oh, well, and uh, this might be the fastest rack I've seen Corey take down just over the two minute mark here as he gets down on the eight ball and we're off to the races 1-0 Corey Duell Chris Melling yet to see the table yeah I mean, if, if Corey's uh, breaking like that um, he's going to have you know um, decent chances at run outs um, it, it looks more it looked like he took the edge off the break compared to other players who kind of real drive uh, put a lot of power in um, me knowing Chris's break. What I believe will happen is that the cue ball kind of shift to the um, to the to the if he's breaking from the right hand side as we look on, the cue ball will sort of hit the third diamond down. Yeah, and just a little bit of uh, uh, information on Corey here, and this is a big one because he's one of the only multifaceted players in this event besides Chris. Uh, he's a U.S. Open champion, a two-time Moscone Cup MVP, and also a U.S. snooker champion. Wow, okay, snooker. Okay, uh, I mean, I know there's not really a lot of snooker tables in the uh, in the U.S. compared to, uh, you know, um, Asia and, and, and uh, in, you know, United Kingdom, should I say. Yeah. Um, so, um, you know, I've, I've not seen a snooker table in the... In the United States before, um, I'd love to see one to see how it's built and you know how the pods are, are cut. Also, Chris is doing cut breaks. Okay, so um, he's made a few balls down. Uh, one, two, three. He's made three, f three. Um, no, sorry, two solids and two stripes. So he made four balls with the break there. It's a big break there. Yeah, and that was a cut break. So. Um, and he's not too not too pleased with the uh, outcome of what he has available to him. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think the the seven ball passes into the center, passes the eight ball into the center, into the side pocket. So he's going to take this long four, I believe. No, it's going to it looks like playing a combination shot. Not the easiest combination there is, but and he's you know, opened it up nicely. He's, he's got the efficient for a reason. Yeah, he's got everything in play. Um, so it looks like the free ball will be last. Um, he's just got to make sure he gets on the straight side of the free ball when he finishes up his uh, routine. He may opt to um, the one and the, the four's a bit, just a little bit smelly. Yeah, 
It's a this is a very interesting layout, and he's yeah. already used his extension, yeah. so had to kind of make a decision there. I I wonder if he may try and make this five and just squeeze in between. I think he's gonna just rest on the one ball, just literally rest on it. Oh, I think he's running. Does now does that four ball pass? I don't think it does. If it does, it's very very tight. I actually, from here, I like the four up and the one up into the right corner if you're going to play something like that. Okay. But I think he can see it yeah. to the left. And he's used his extension, like he said, so he ain't got time to uh, think about it. He's yeah, he's sitting around 10 seconds right mm -hmm. now. Guys, fired it in. Uh, Chris Melling doing Chris Melling things. Mm. Pretty quick work here from Chris. Not the easiest rack to run out. No, no. I mean, I think, um, again, this is contrast of style. You know, I think Corey's going to be a lot more tidier in his finishing. You know, Chris is obviously a strong potter, as we all know. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, if he's got sight on the on the ball, he's more likely to make something happen. Um, you know, what you find, Chris, as much as he's a strong potter, um, his positional play can sometimes be just a tiny bit loose and he has to play a, 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 a chasing shot um, but we all know that he gets himself out of it so um, that's what Chris does Chris does Chris things <laughs> yeah that's that's very true and if you're just joining us and maybe you don't know as much about Chris Melling look at this two-time WPF world champion a three-time ultimate pool pro series champion and a former Moscone Cup MVP, like we talked about. Chris does all the games. He plays American Pool, he plays Snooker, he plays Ultimate Pool, and he plays uh, Chinese 8-Ball as well. Correct, yep, yep. So, kind of does a lot of different things here. Uh, just to give you an update, guys, our next match on our TV table is, of course, going to be Billy Thorpe, Tyler Steyer. After that, we're going to take a quick break from our open event and we're going to crown a ladies champion it's going to be tiffany brock and michelle mcdermott in the finals of the ladies event and then we'll be back immediately after that with our final to crown our louisiana open champion it's all coming your way later tonight and we're going to go back to back to back no stopping now two more champions to crown we crowned our junior champion earlier in an absolutely heartbreaking moment Jaden Holt defeated Braden and uh, that was a, a wild match did you were you able to watch any no, of that? No I've not seen any oh, of that. It came down to the wire and an unfortunate uh, untimely uh, intentional foul oh. uh, unfortunately just a crazy situation. The time clock was down to 15 seconds, and it was Hill Hill, and it was just a wild situation. So you played an intentional foul on the on the other rule sets. That's okay, or, or yeah. It's, so right. in, in normal American pool, um, so uh, it was kind of a crazy situation. The eight and the two were lined up to the pocket, mm -hmm. and he was solids, and so he can't tap his two ball without making the eight. And the time was running, and I believe, I don't want to get it wrong, but I believe the young man is somewhere in the range of 12 to 13 years old. Mm -hmm. He just didn't know what to do, so he uh, played an intentional foul to his opponent's ball. And lost a frame. And lost a frame in international eight ball rules. Uh, very heartbreaking, but congratulations to both of them. I am a fan of both of those young men now, um, so I'll be keeping an eye on them, and I can't wait to see them show up at other Ultimate Pool events but uh meanwhile Corey has really stuck himself here yeah but you know that's the uh, that's the drama of the 15 second shot clock when it gets down to it yeah when it, it gets... creates all kinds yeah. of situations that uh, uh you're not used to so um unfortunate situation there but i know for a fact the young man is very pleased with his performance mm -hmm. and he knows now that uh, that would put him in good shape. Sometimes you need you need a um, a, a real sort of um, like a wake up, or like yeah, a, 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 a learning bad, experience. Yeah, but yeah, learning. So yeah, sometimes even a bad loss like that, it, a dramatic loss like that, it, um, it actually sets you up for the future. You know. Yeah. Um, Look at that combo. Yeah. 
Yeah, Chris is very good at combos and spot. He, he's he's just so good. Um, and that's not me. That is nothing to do with a UK standpoint by all means necessary. Um, I do, from what I've seen, I do have my favourite, not my favourite, who I believe is going to win in a, in a quartet. Um, but, um, uh, 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 not quartet, sorry, in the foursome, shall I say? Uh, quartet, yeah, as well. Yeah, right, yeah, right, right, same, right. Thing, <laughs> same thing, yeah, yeah. Same thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and, um, you know, is, is this is this game is is a lot. I think both semi finals could be a, a a contrast of styles. <laughs> yeah, you know. yeah. Well, and I mean both both matches can mm. go to any of the four players. I mean, yeah. we have literally several combinations of a final we could have because all of these guys are playing well enough to get there. Mm. And uh, you know, Tyler and Billy might be breaking the best I've ever seen in this tournament and uh, of course the firepower of Chris and the steadiness of Corey Corey's only loss to Shane Thompson came in a real back and forth victory where Shane Thompson that's a lovely shot there just played absolutely phenomenal to send Corey to the B side Corey quick to uh, come back and Join the losers qualification and now he's here in the final four playing Chris Melling. Yeah, and Chris came for the loser session as well because he got beat by Darren. Jeff DeLuna. Oh Jeff DeLuna, that's it. Yeah. He lost to Darren in the shootout, my mistake. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and that's that's something I'm more excited to uh to see more of is the uh shootouts. Um I'm very, very pleased with how fun that was! Uh, yeah, it's it's something different. I mean, and there's other formats that you guys have as well. It's not just the shootout that brings the excitement. Um, if you've ever watched Ultimate Pool over in the UK, you know about the Last Man Standing events and um, a couple other fun things that you guys do. Yeah, Last Man Standing. That's um, that's that's fun. Um, yeah, like dangerously fun. <laughs> um, fun to watch. Too, fun yeah. to watch. Yeah, fun to watch. Not fun for a player. Um, you know, um, is again. You know, what Omar Pools are all about is bringing um, excitement to the game. You know, creating these little minute sort of uh, um, tournament rules, um, or, or not even rules, just situations like the top, um, the shot clock. Um, everything else like that, um, you know. Um, so we're back to Chris's breaks, doing a cut break again. Let's hit that two ball, the second ball down, really well. Um, oh, the, these will be gone. Um, yeah, eight balls in a kind of a tricky spot. You have whether you take solids or stripes, you have to take the ten or the five, five last. Yeah, yeah, definitely correct. I uh, think I, I think I like the stripes here only because the one is not near as accessible as the thirteen is. Well, yeah. The only thing about it, I think both stripes don't go into the corner. Sorry, both balls in the top right. So the one and the thirteen. I don't think they're both available into the top um, right corner. Um, I think they're kind of like blocking each other's way. So I think he has to play a developing shot at some point. Yeah, and. Uh, looks like Chris has that in mind because he's going to play the six ball here. I think he's trying to set up for, again, like you said, that developing shot, yeah. trying to break that ball out. And he's got the four ball here in the side, just going to skim past the two mm -hmm. ball. And I think this actually sets him up nicely on the seven. Yeah, so if he can just break, or, in, if he can just break into the, um, to the 13, just nudge it. He wants to touch the 13, not the one. That's and perfect. That's smooth. Yeah. Now he's got the three, and if he can control the cue ball well enough, he'll have the seven ball mm -hmm. afterwards. I think he's at such a tough angle, he may have to travel a little further than he wanted to, but Chris's cue ball control is... Oh, he can see the seven now. Yeah. Okay, so he's going to take the, the, the five ball now. Probably um, either or either... You know, it depends how he gets shape on either the um, the, the three ball or the one ball. I think he's got options here. I know. think I think going from the one to the three is a little <laughs> easier. Yeah. Um, don't have to do as much. Yeah. And it's literally just stop shot, stop shot. Eight ball in the corner. 
give himself a 2-1 lead. I'm sorry, a 3-1 lead against Corey here. Yeah, everything everything about um, this finish here was all about the the, the break into the um, the break out or the bump. Um, we say cannon in the, in the UK um, into the 13 ball, and you know he just he just lightly touched it. Um, so he just goes out of the way, rests on the top rail, and um, his path. Um, the tables is. Yeah, it's uh, it's quite funny how the uh, the terminology. The terminology. Yeah. So, um, we'll play a little game here. So, draw, screw back, or screw for short. Uh, carom. Sorry. Carom. Carom. So, uh, you hit one ball and you bump into another. Oh, cannon. Cannon. Uh, okay, you do one. Um, double. <coughs> uh, one rail bank. Okay. Or straight back. Straight. Okay. Um, top spin. Follow. Okay. Stun shot. Stun. Or or I call it a drag. Okay. Okay. We call it a drag a drag where it just drags a lot, but it doesn't. It keeps. It's like a kill. Oh, what you call a kill shot, right? Yeah, a kill a kill shot on the cue ball. So you're hitting it with uh, almost like a bottom, but you're just letting it roll, roll forward, forward just yeah. a little. Yeah, we call that a drag. Yeah, kind of a kill shot. Yeah. yeah. We'll have to do some more of those. Yeah. <laughs> is he gonna get the fourteen? No. Oh, this is this is tough for Corey. Yeah, he doesn't have as much power as Chris does. I mean, his breaks. Um, it seems. Uh, um, um, and this, you know, I mean, I like the way he controls the cue ball on his breaks. But he, he compensates that with um, a lack of power. So. So he's um, come up dry here. And um, that's something that you don't really want to do with Chris. Um, so Chris is taking spots here. Something that I don't think I would have done. But sorry, solids, not spots. <laughs> we were just talking about the terminology <laughs> spots. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, he didn't end up great here. He, uh, he's really in a little bit of an odd situation because of where the six and seven is. Yeah, I think um, he's going to try and go into the one ball now. I don't. I think he's going to play tactically and try and play a pass a turn. Oh, he's, he might get a combo here. The one into the ten to the six. Yeah, he might get a combo here, and, and, and the ten will break out the, the thirteen. And the ball moves yeah, the seven. The se um, seven or the thirteen. Yeah. 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 Well, this will be interesting. Oh, is he playing it off the? He's playing it off the one. Okay. Off the one. Off the one. Yeah. In oh. Oh, oh man, that would have been a yeah, that a really phenomenal yeah, shot, yeah. and that's the vision that Chris has. Um, he sees shots that a lot of people just don't see. So um, our our version of Chris mm -hmm. um, would be Tony Chohan. Tony Chohan, okay. Um, because uh, especially in the game of one pocket, mm -hmm. he can see the 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 reactions three, four, five balls around. Right. Uh, and he's just really good at being creative like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. So uh, as far as that creativity and that ability to see the carom off of one ball into a combo that plays another ball, and that's that's definitely a Tony and, Chohan and, and, characteristic. And not, ju not just making the, the, the actual um, pot itself, but actually where the balls are going to lie afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Moving balls yeah, into yeah, shape yeah. And, and even getting cue ball shape yeah, too. Right, exactly. Yeah. You know, it's so much to take in when you're doing those kind of shots, like combination shots, where, um, you know, people will just think about the, the execution part of it, but not the actual result yeah. after the shot. So, um... Well, look at this. Corey played this really well so yeah. far. And, uh... Chris going to be looking back at that one and thinking oh, I really should have made that combination mm -hmm. so he's going to take the uh, what's going to be the 11 ball last um, after this uh, 14 nope, 14 that's correct 14 yep. he's ok, he's ok, just slip past the 2 ball also make sure that he's not 
resting on the side rail. Needs a little bounce. That's, yeah, that's perfect. There you go. Get that little bit of angle. Yeah. And Corey really being pretty precise here. Yeah, I've, I've noticed with um, Corey with his action. Um, I mean, I've not. I've only seen Corey from the yesteryears, so I've not seen him of late. Um, but he has kind of like a flicky action with his wrist. Like yeah, it's, yeah. It's, quite, it's quite flicky. It's not. Although, like it's it's a stroke. It's not like a a firm stroke. It's kind of like he f he flicks his uh, his stroke in sort of thing. Yeah, and his his, his grip is uh, his grip is a little loose. Loose, ultra light. Um, and so he he kind of he kind of does have that little bit of a flick of the wrist yeah. type of thing. Mm. Um, but there's, you know, there's a lot of players, um, you know, nowadays with a lot of the European players, um, especially in, in rotation games, mm -hmm. um, you see them uh, very, a lot of times they're, they're called robots or that they're very mechanical. Yep. Um, and then you look at some of the guys from, uh, I guess, that really got on the scene in the early 2000s, like the Corys and the Shane Van Bonings and yep. stuff. Their fundamentals are totally different, right? Um, and generally, they're unique to them. Yeah. Yes. Corey has that flick of the wrist. Shane has that, has that kind of up and down. Yeah. Stroke, some, but he some, does it so good. Someone said that um, uh, the other day to me, um, up, up and welly or something like that. They called it up, like up and welly. But so it's almost like you're picking up something from a from a um, a, um, a welly. Um, what do you call it? Like a water welly. Sort of thing. Like a water mill? No, a uh, water mill. Yeah, sort of thing. Like, like it's like a. I call it a conveyor belt. So it kind of oh, goes up like and down. a. Uh, I know what you're talking about. Like you're turning the thing to, to, yeah. to bring the to bring the water. That's out of the it. Well. Yeah, I can't think of the name now. <laughs> um, but yeah, so yeah, he's got. So I call it kind of the the wheelbarrow. Right. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Which I don't know why I call it yeah. that, but it's got that up and down motion. Yeah. But there's a lot of players who have. Uh, like Chris, Chris has the very distinct slow drawback, yeah. good pause, pause, and then the smoothest follow through and, I've ever and that's, seen. And that's all snooker. What you'll find is most snooker players, if not all, um, has what we call is a, a, a few feathers, stop, so a pause at the front, a slow drawback, and then a, uh, a pause at the back, and then accelerate through yeah. with a nice transition. Um, now, believe it or not, if for, for the snooker fans out there, um, you know, people argue, say, that Ronald Sullivan's got the best um, snooker cue action. He actually has, like, um, that conveyor belt action. Yeah. Um, it's quite minimal. So he actually has no pause at the back. He, yeah. he just slows it down at the back and then dips his shoulder and go through. When you talk about snooker players, you talk about, uh, like, Hendry. Hendry has that little bit of a... A, a, it's like a yeah. zing or something. I don't yeah. even know what to call it, but he has that little bit of a, a weird motion there. Yeah. But I mean, he's one of the best in the world. Yeah, yeah. So. I mean, you know, he's he's a former seven times champion, Hendry. Um, Ronnie's matched him. So, um, but yeah, but back to the action here on the pool table. And Chris is um, going to draw this back now, I think. Oh, nope. He's going to just stun out, should I say. I didn't know what kind of angle he had, to be fair. Yeah, it's a big power stun yeah. right there. Yeah. You hit that ball hard and get the cue ball to just and, come out and, off the rail. And that's what Chris's cue action allows him to do. You know, it's got that nice acceleration drive that he can just get action on the cue ball. Yeah. Um, very, very long, you know. He's got, he's actually, his bridge hand is really far away from um, the cue ball like, on all shots. Even, yeah. even on slow shots, what, what, what you kind of um, tend to find is that on a, on a slow shot, you kind of bring your bridge hand forward a little bit. But, um, Oh yeah, yeah. So you kind of choke up on it. Yeah, yeah, but he doesn't do that. He just slows down his acceleration speed completely. Yeah. To a minimal. It's very difficult to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. But you know, you can't. You don't really. You wouldn't really teach it. So it's quite unique for him. Yeah. Well, and and Chris is, uh, you know, absolutely um, one of the best. And here he has a four-two lead over Corey Duell, and uh, Corey really wanted an opportunity to get himself back in this game so let me ask you this who who is your who is your favorite american pool player so if i've got to be honest with you i mean 
I've never really sort of divulged into looking at the ins and outs of American Paul, yeah. you know, in terms of excitement, in terms of <laughs> consistency, in terms of everything else. Um, in recent years, I do like watching Dennis. Um, I can't remember. That. So Dennis Arcolo, yeah, yeah, he's from the Philippines. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, he's he's yeah. been embedded in American yeah. Paul forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do like I I, I do like him a lot. Um, he's just like tons of steel plays the right shots, makes them, whatever not. Um, you have to respect Shane Van Van, Bo- Van Bonin. Um, yeah. You know, obviously, people, you know, the, the history will say FN. Yeah, Reyes, FN you know? Reyes. Um, but, um, Out of the uh, players that are here that you've got to meet and kind of see how they play, who, who do you, who's your favorite? Um, from what I've seen this weekend... Um, although I've not spoken to the player, it's Billy Thorpe. Billy Thorpe, yeah. Yeah. Um, Big fan favorite. Yeah, yeah. Every yeah, USA. Um, uh, and um, I think it's going to be hard to stop, if I've got to be honest. From, his, what I've, from what I've seen this weekend. His break has been really phenomenal. Yeah. Of course, Tyler. Uh, Tyler, one of those that he's just so consistently mm. great. Yeah, yeah. And, and I say that not loosely, consistently great. Because I, f- I mean, he does everything very well. Yeah, I think I think when you're consistent, it will get you more deeper into the tournaments. Most of the time, you know, what I mean, and then what happens after the semi-finals is, you know, need an element of luck and you know, element of good stroke and all that, you know, and and, and you, you, I find Tyler's not gonna, he's not very exposed. He doesn't expose himself to being beaten by someone, maybe. A little bit less than him, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, he, and he he plays the same way against you, me, uh, his wife. Yeah, anybody. <laughs> you know, he he's he wants gonna... he wants to win. I've spoke to him before, and he says that he, you know when I spoke to him, um, he actually you know he actually took me out for lunch um, on Friday. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. After the shootout, huh? Uh, fr- <laughs> no, that was first first day. Yeah, Friday. Friday. Yeah, after Friday. the shootout. Yeah, after the shootout. Yeah, just just um just off the cuff, really, and. Um, we was talking, and he's very big into his nutrition. Yeah. Um, and, um, he, yeah, he, he follows a certain diet. And, you know, me being a bigger person, trust me, you know, I, the history of the game will tell you that you need to be fit playing this game. Yeah. Whether, well, whether, whether it's, a, whether it's a, a, a challenge match or whether it's a tournament, a one-day tournament, a weekend tournament, you need to be fit. You need to have endurance to manage yourself round after round, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and evidentially, if you look at the great players or the greatest of players in all Q sports, it will kind of show you that. Yeah, you know, um, the, the the biggest thing is, um, uh, I think people have to understand that even though we're not, you guys aren't wearing pads or helmets or anything, this mm-hmm. is a sport. Yeah, and it does take a level of mental and physical uh, uh, exertion out of you. Um, so I mean, yeah, being being somewhat fit or having an idea um, about how you eat, especially when you're playing. Mm-hmm. Um, the question I always ask, and sorry guys, I know we're kind of drifting off. Chris Melling here on the eight ball. Yeah, he's done a tidy finish there. The, the shot, not the not the last shot, just shot before we just slipped past the five ball. Played the top spin with left hand side. Um, you Great. know, you just had to make sure he did bump into the five ball to get shape on his last ball. Um, and now he's leading six, six racks to two. Sorry, I say frames. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we say frames over in the UK. And Chris has really been playing good. But my favorite question to ask somebody is uh, when you're playing a, a long tournament where maybe it's drawn out is, uh, you know, what's your favorite meal to eat? Because it's very important about what you eat before you play. Me, honestly, banana. Banana. Yeah, yeah. I try. Me personally, I can't eat. With, I can't play pool with a heavy stomach. Yeah, yeah. So it depends on the schedule. If it's like two, anything up to two hours before, I'll have like a light. I can have a light meal. Literally yeah. Light meal. But if I got a schedule in the morning, I won't have breakfast at all. Yeah. Like um, I, I always go for something that I feel like has a lot of protein, mm-hmm. but is light to eat. So yeah. uh, my go-to is is salmon and rice. Right. Okay. If I can find a good salmon and rice, yeah. it gives me that protein, that energy that I need. And but it also doesn't make me feel sluggish and yeah. tired. Yeah. So. And what you don't want, you don't want peaks of um, 
Um, don't want pizza. They don't, you really don't want burgers no, or no. anything I, super greasy. You don't want to spike yourself either. Like, um, one of my mother has have a rush of um, sugar or glucose yeah. and then you drop, you know. So, uh, Chris there with the break, he's made a ball. And um, it is 5-2. to two. Um, um, these, I think he'll go solids here. Um, just needs to, well, I mean, I believe that he will probably play the 2, then the 3. Four swing out for the six, then five or seven and eight ball last. Okay, yeah. maybe another way then. I, w I would have rolled forward and take the three into the left hand side, but um, either or either is going to be okay. Yeah, that, that seven five. I think he wants to get a better angle on one of those mm -hmm. balls. So yeah, there it is. Yeah. I think he can play. Uh, probably the seven ball mm -hmm. and then roll forward for the three in the side <coughs> oh he's just gonna pull over okay so it looks like he's gonna I've, well yeah so he's gonna play a three ball next I think I don't know what kind of angle oh, he's, I, gonna, oh, so he's, he's gonna, gonna play the six and then the five roll up for the three I would think maybe yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And that's probably the easiest pattern to get to the eight ball. Yeah, I mean, he could, yeah, I mean, he could have played. Um, you know, if he got the free, got rid of the three earlier, then he could have played the five or the seven as the last ball to you know and get to the eight ball. But the eight ball goes in all corners, I believe, all pockets. Yeah, and he's gonna get a little bit more angle than he really mm. wanted on this. Yeah, but that, I mean, it, it's okay. The 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 ball is makeable, and the eight ball is has two different pockets that can go in so yeah. if he over rolls one he can shoot to the other and now up six to two against Corey Duell. Corey had a fantastic tournament so far he's gonna have to pull something yeah. out of thin air because yeah. uh, alternate break format Chris is breaking fairly well yeah I mean um, you know it's six two right now Corey's got to just, well, I guess hang in. He's got nothing else but to hang in. You know, um, he's, he's got a four frame deficit, and, uh, you know, if he does manage to get Hill Hill somehow, at least he's got the break in his, in his hand because he did win the lag. But, um, you know, I can't see Chris breaking down in the next two of his breaks at the least. So, um, you know, maybe one if he's lucky, but not two out of, not, not, not um, two, out of two to break down. Yeah, and this is uh, this is Chris really being in a great position as far as the score. Um, the time is good. It doesn't look like we're going to get down to that 15-second shot clock. No. So uh, Chris is probably feeling really, really good about the situation. And Corey, on the other hand, really needs something special to happen here. Not only breaking, but hoping that Chris makes a mistake on his break. Oh, that's a strong break. That's a strong break. I mean, he's parked that cue ball absolutely what we say in the UK, plum, um, which means perfection, um, slang terms. Um, yeah, that's the kind of break we all want to see where, the, the you know, you make a few balls and the, and the white ball's not loose. It's just It just jumps and skids and, and just parks up. But he's played a bit of a loose shot there. Um... Yeah, that's the that's the oddest thing of I've, I've seen from Corey there, is he just he kind of played it a little relaxed. Yeah, he didn't want to run into it, and uh, he caught the edge, and now he's having to play a tough cut. It's a good shot. I think it threw his rhythm off a yeah. little bit. So um, is he going to play the? Um, I mean, I could be wrong here, but is he going to get a shape on the seven ball? Um, but he's cutting into the left corner, just with an angle to cannon into the um, the brown. Excuse me, the brown, <laughs> brown seven. So uh, the, the stripe, the brown fourteen. Is that correct? Brown fifteen. Fifteen. Sorry. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. You're right. Yeah. I, he didn't quite get the angle, so he's going to have to force it. Yeah. But I think he's just going to follow forward and try and. He might even try and bump the eight. Oh no, he was just able to control yeah, it. He's it that's a good shot. Yeah. Always better to not touch balls if you don't have to. Correct, yeah. Oh, yeah, he's cool. fine. 
I was worried about that little kiss, yeah. maybe into the side pocket. That'd be rough. But uh, six to three, Corey Duell, and we are jumping into our tenth game out of a possible thirteen. So it could get really dicey here. Chris obviously wants to make a ball and see anything, mm -hmm. and Corey maybe uh, crossing his fingers for a scratch on the break or a dry break. And if we look at Chris Mellon here, um, we can see in the ca uh, camera shot, what you'll find with Chris is when he's, at the, when he's on his seat, he doesn't move. He doesn't um, have any facial expressions, even if um, a player's played like a, f a, a, a lucky shot or anything like that. Um, and um, he, 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 he really tries to control his breathing while he's sitting down, which a lot of these things goes missing in, in, in terms of um, the mental aspects of the game. Um, you know, composure, you know, he, he, he believes in himself where um, if he gets to the table, he, he's going to run out. So, you know, why sort of kind of put a face if, you, if you're probably yeah. lucky on a shot, you know, providing that his frame's still left. Something uh, my dad taught me when I was learning mm -hmm. to play pool is uh, anytime you miss a shot or, or do something stupid mm -hmm. or whatever, you don't ever react because you're giving your opponent the only thing that can never be full, and it's always free, and that's confidence. Yeah. So you're giving away free confidence when you react to shots or or maybe, you know, you kind of bump your cue on the ground. Right, exactly. Um, you're just making your opponent feel better about their mm. situation. Well, that was a brilliant break. David watched the replay. Um, he's crunched them, um, made uh, the... F uh, he made the five, five ball. I think he made another one. He made another ball, yeah. I'm not too sure what it was, but he's taking solace here, and these look very comfortably. You know, these these are, uh, um, he's going to just drift down for the two ball, um, um, come across for shape on the um, on the seven ball, and just be the three and the six ball for last. He might opt to take the three ball now, so he just clears the pathway. Yep, so he's going to take the free ball probably. Um, no, he's having a second look. For me, it'll be the free ball, but I think he's just worried about the angle he has on the free ball. Um, if he's that worried about it, he probably can just kind of pop it backwards, take um, toward, pop the white ball back, screw the white ball back towards the left-hand side of the, the table. Yeah, but just wants to avoid... Yeah. No, nope, so he's going to take the seven ball now. He's come up a little awkward on this yeah, one. Yeah, he's going to fight the top corner. The only thing about it, he's going to have to kind of like dink it a little bit, but I don't think he can hold for the seven ball properly, so he might have to go around the houses a little bit, or he might just... So, yeah, he, I think he's going to cut right through the three ball um, to the corner in between oh, no, the six and he's the eight. It, he's taking it to the side. And he's... Uh -oh. Yeah, and that's and for me, I think he should have taken the free ball earlier. Screw draw back for the the seven ball. Yeah, over here uh, in, the over in the corner, and then just swing around the the you know two rails onto the onto the six ball into the top left, yeah. top right. Sorry, um, and he was worried about it because you can see by his um, his study of the patterns. But how are we going to see Chris Manny do Chris Manny things again? Is this going to be a highlight reel shot? When this is. You know, I think ideally off the. Oh, that's skidded. That he misread that big time. Um, so <laughs> after the big break from Chris, which he had everything at his mercy, he's made an unforced error, and um, he's handed Corey um, the table, and Corey should be making the scoreline six four with himself to break next to make it 6-5 if he can again Corey's got um, he needs he needs help from Chris in this situation and he's got the first help yeah he got the first help he's got to get at least one more mm. and then this is all on Corey here he just simply has to and he's shooting kind of fast huh? well he's done a 15 second uh, 6 ball shootout on the anybody wants to um, see the uh, highlight reel on that one um, Darren Appleton um recorded it 15 seconds 
six ball shootout on one of the tables outside. Really? Yeah. Maybe out on the TikTok table? Uh, no. Or one like, of the what, other side what, tables? Yeah, one of the side tables. Yeah, yeah. Wow. TikTok, yeah. 15 seconds. Um, he made what? three balls of the break. <laughs> and that's that's tied with the fastest in competition, correct? Yes. No, no, yeah. no. <laughs> the fastest in competition is by, um, well, in the UK, it's by Brian Halcrow. Um, and that's 15, 15.09, I think it is. That's a fast time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and, and Brian's a slow player. He's, he's, like, he's like 52, 53 years of age. Yeah. And he's slow, he's he's not slow, slow, but he's not... He's not, not, not as quick he's, as a He's, slow, he's yeah. not the fastest person around he's the table. Not, he's not running around the table no, like no one does. No. But I think what helps, though, with a 15-second shoot... Oh, sorry, with a shoot shootout, I think um, if you're a... Uh, if you've got a cue action which is a bit kind of jabby that might help because you, you, you just most jabby. of your shots you're just trying to stop the ball anyways. right yeah, yeah but yeah. if you've got like a, a elongated cue action like Chris you're gonna waste just just in that pull back and and yeah. you, know, you, you know it's not natural for you to jab the ball and because he's so comfortable with that cue action mm -hmm. to make the ball if he's not able to do that there's a small chance that he right. might jar a ball right. or, yeah. or something crazy but, happens. But Chris, is, Chris sees patterns so quickly. That's that's his advantage. You know, um, what people see in 10 seconds, he sees in two. Yeah. Like, you know. Um, well, that, so, I mean, that's crazy. 15 seconds, that's a great time yeah. there. And uh, I don't think we're going to get a chance to see that six-ball shootout with Corey and Chris here. There's uh, over... 22 minutes left on the clock. Corey needs a ball down. No, he's, uh -oh. he's dry. And again, Chris has got the balls at his mercy, so hopefully you'll put that error away. Um, and he's got a fielder's choice here. Yeah. It doesn't matter what he takes. The 11 ball does pass the 2, and the 7 ball does pass the 13, so it's whatever he likes, really. Well, I think he wants... He, I think if you're taking um, um, stripes... The, the eight ball's going to be more readily available after clearing them up. Yeah. If you're taking solids, the eight ball's just a bit... A vote goes, it's just a bit sort of sniffy to one pocket, maybe. Yeah, I think so, I think Chris recognized that yeah. as well. And then also the, the three and the four being a little close to each other yeah. near that pocket yeah. probably influenced his decision to take the stripes here. So I imagine he's going to shoot the ten ball... And I would think that he wants to get, at some point, he wants to get on the 11 kind of early. So it's just asking for the cue ball to be clean. And what will happen when the cue ball gets clean, there's no, um, there's no uh, um, time stop. Yeah, it's on your own time. Oh, it's on your own time, yeah. And that's the same with getting the, the rest or what you guys call the bridge. Yeah. Yep, okay. So I think uh, it's going to be taking the... Um, the, the yes, that's what I thought. The, the fourteen ball. fourteen ball next. Take the um. He actually might. The, he's looking at the twelve here. Sorry, is that tw the purple? What's the purple? Sorry, yeah, twelve. Twelve. That's what. That's yeah, what yeah. I meant. So twelve. Then the nine. Then the thirteen, and then the eleven ball last. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So you're saying nine, fourteen, Four, fourteen, sorry. and eleven. Yeah. 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 You have to forgive me for my number um, <laughs> combinations because it's not something I'm used to. I'm going to send you a graph of all the balls. <laughs> that way you can work yeah. on them. I mean, I know one to no, not one to nine. So it's, it's just the numbers after I've got to think about. The, I know they double up. Well, the best the, the way I remember it mm -hmm. is um, the red ball. Um, so whatever the red ball is, plus eight. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So eight. the three is red. Red plus, plus eight, eight is the eleven. Yeah. So. Uh, and, uh, Corey's just conceded before Chris um, pots the eight ball. Yeah, very quick match out there. Yep. Corey with a great tournament here. Chris Melling moves into the finals. He is your first finalist for the Louisiana Open. Simon going to get a word with the magician right after this.
Uh, welcome back down to the arena with our first finalist, Chris. Congratulations. Another very solid performance. It feels like you've, you've really hit the ground today and playing some great stuff. Yeah, I seem to be getting stronger and stronger each match um, against somebody like Corey, you, you've got to play really well. He's a class player and a, he's a great eight ball player as well. A lot of people may not have seen him play eight ball, but he's a brilliant eight ball player. So I knew I had to be on my game and uh, I think I was. Obviously, we've talked a lot, you know, you chop and change games a lot with so much success and you, you kind of make it look easy in doing it. But I mean, you surprised how, how well it's gone this week in terms of the level you've been able to play considering you've not played, you know, kind of small table US eight ball for a long time? Yeah, kind of, and it was strange because coming here, I actually didn't even know what Q I was using, yeah. which shafts, yeah. because uh, Q Tech have sent me quite a few different shafts which I've been trying out. One's longer than the other ones, <coughs> one's a thinner uh, dimension. So um, Shane, Shane didn't have a Q, so he asked if he could borrow mine. Yeah. So he's actually been using my other Q. So I've I've just stuck to the the one that I, yeah. you know I brought. Because what happens with me sometimes is if I make a silly mistake or I get too much reaction on a shot or not enough reaction, I think it's a shaft. Yeah. It's probably me, really. Yeah, but you want but to change it. Yes, yeah, so I end up yeah. changing the shaft and it, you just do your own editing when you do that. So uh, it's important just, just to stick to what you know, really. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, you, I've seen you change cues so many times, it doesn't surprise me to hear that. But you are into the final, uh, potentially another Ultimate Pool title on the line, but it's it very different because it's Ultimate Pool USA and a completely different style of game. It's been a while since you won a, to a tournament on this style of table. I mean, it, it's a, potentially a big match coming up. Yeah, definitely. And whoever I play in the final, I'm sure it's going to be a great game. It's going to be a tough game. Yeah. But if I keep playing like that, I have every chance of winning the title. And it would mean a lot to me, obviously, being the first one, apart from Darren winning the shootout. So uh, if I could lift the title, lift the trophy, then uh, yeah, I'll take it. Some, some good synergy there because you won the first UK one as well, which is quite nice to win the first American one as well. But as the rounds have gone on, you've been... From the outside in, looking in, it looks like you've played an unbelievable level all the way through. But do you do feel like you're getting just that little bit stronger as the rounds go on? Do you feel like the, the feel and the touch is getting there even more? Yeah, definitely. I'm timing the ball great. I mean, when I played the seven ball in the corner, I screwed it back about two feet and I yeah. didn't even mean to screw it back. Yeah. Just timing just it so well. Yeah, yeah, I'm just hitting it so well. Um, but obviously every match is different. You know, Believe it or not, the weather outside makes a difference yeah. to how the table plays. So, um, yeah, if I just keep playing my game, concentrate on on what I'm doing and not, not yeah. focus on anybody else and uh, have a chance. And you don't care who you play in the final? No, I don't care who I play. It's, in my opinion, you know, some people call it big-headed or arrogant, but I'm just interested in how, in how I play, not how anybody else plays. Yeah, a race to eight in the final, and as you keep saying to me every time I talk to you, is if you get eight chances, then you've had enough. Yeah, if I get eight chances to win, in, uh, one chance each rack, yeah. then if I don't win, it's my own fault. Well, we're looking forward to seeing it. Best of luck when we see you in the final a little bit later on. We'll find out who Chris will play in that final next.
Welcome back, everybody. Time to find out who Chris Melling will play in the Louisiana Open final. And we have two huge American players out there right now. Tyler Steyer will have the break. He is taking on Billy Thorpe. It really is a tough match to call. Both players have played incredibly well. Stephen White joins me on comms for this one. You have to say, from what we've seen today, though, Billy Thorpe's probably been the player of the day. Yeah, we we didn't get a chance to see Billy in the shootout, and we didn't really get a chance to see him up until yesterday on the TV table. Um, in my opinion, I believe that this match will come down to who can break the balls better, and that's and that's really all it comes down to. Uh, Billy played an absolute flawless match earlier. And Tyler has done the same several times. So, I mean, again, it's just the break. And whoever figures that break out first and is able to keep it consistent will win this match. And Tyler opting for the solids here. It looks like a problem here on the right-hand side. But if he could get right behind the seven or get good shape on the seven, it's not really a problem. Seven, one combination is pretty much locked in yeah and I think it's actually helpful because the one ball is just very slightly off the rail so I think uh, with the way the table is accepting shots I think it'll actually be helpful he doesn't have to be dead straight on it was really interesting actually watching uh, I, I obviously with you on commentary with Cleve for the first uh, semi there I decided to go and watch it from the back of the arena and, and speak to a few people and it was nice to see uh, see the game from a different perspective here in, in Louisiana, but also uh, it was interesting. We've got 32 other tables here, and there was two people playing. You had uh, Tyler Steyer and Billy Thorpe. They were a few tables apart, just they didn't, they didn't stop. You know, didn't stop. They're just keeping the arm going, staying in stroke, just, just getting themselves ready. And Tyler's, um, in a sense, Tyler's famous for this. I, I once heard a story that uh, Tyler at a tournament asked if he could practice early because the, the tables had not been opened yet and they opened the tables for him. He played and practiced on that turn on that table until he uh, had to play his tournament match. And then once the day was over and the tournament was done and there was nobody left in the room, he went right back to that same table and continued to practice for his day two. Um, his drive and his ethic is really something to be... Uh, marveled at because he has no quit and he has all heart. Yeah, a real professional. Really is as well. You know, on and off the table. You know, when it's business, it's it's absolutely business out there. But you know, when it's uh, it's the dedication and when he needs to spend time, you know, working with different people, sponsors and, and whatever else, he's he gives so much back to people. He's an absolute absolute quality person all round, really. Yeah, great ambassador for the game. And he yeah, that, that was the word I was <laughs> searching for. He definitely yeah. did not want to get all the way no. back here. But he's a touch fortunate as well to have the gap. He can get to the center of the cue ball, which is a touch on the fortunate side. Yeah, absolute phenomenal ambassador for just the, the entire sport of pool. Um, really top-notch guy. And, of course, and Billy, too. Billy is yeah. uh, Billy's a promoter of pool and uh, loves to interact with the fans and I think he has a pretty good cheering section here at this event. Tyler no doubt has made quite a few fans this week and uh, I think this might be Tyler's first trip down to Shreveport. I know Billy's been here a couple times but Tyler coming all the way from Oshkosh, Wisconsin way up north there and uh, there you see a couple of his achievements. Moscone Cup champion, two times over a Texas Open champion, and, of course, the Kremlin Cup champion, along with several other huge accomplishments. You've got to say many, many more in his future with the dedication he has for the game. Well, and if he can continue to break and run like that, he, may, he might be adding Louisiana Open champion to that list as well. Oh, not the best. Worst break I've seen Billy hit all weekend long, but he still made a ball. 
Yeah, navigating through this rack is going to be uh, a little trickier than, than normal. I think he's looking at the solids here. Do you think the five passes the four to the corner? I. It looks like it just barely might pass. And if it does, he'll be able to control that shot to just bump the nine out of the way. But yeah. I think it's one of those shots where you have to get absolutely perfect, you know, ball in hand shape is what I call it, um, where you can just say, I need the cue ball to be here to shoot the shot correctly. If it doesn't, he might have the gap as well. He might be able to get the gap between the five and the nine just about, and then he can play the four. But that isn't ideal. The gap is small. Yes, yeah, I, and I think what he's doing here is he's trying to continuously improve his shape so he can get to that five ball. Because so I do think it does just slightly pass. Yeah. Agreed. As soon as Billy feels like he has the best opportunity at it. Oh, he's playing underneath it. If he's playing that gap, he was, if he's trying to track for the, for the four there, that was ambitious with the line he picked because the gap's small but he hasn't quite reached if that was the plan so he's got the two in the side I mean, which may well have just been his plan he maybe thought he might be getting a bump on the eight which might have actually helped if he got the four ball bump on the eight because it might have knocked it on for, the, for yeah. the corner so that may have been what he was thinking but he's plumb on the five and he's got a good position to just bump the nine as well kind of what we were talking about he wants to get a specific spot and now that he's got it he can just bump the nine ball out of the way and be right on the four ball. Perfect. And even with that, a, a, honestly, a, a terrible break shot. Um, able to make something out of it. And the only thing he has to navigate here is just the eight ball. Uh, doesn't go in either of the bottom two pockets. So he may be looking to see how he can get underneath it. A touch short if that was the plan to taking the six into the side. Yeah, I believe he wanted to be on the top side of the six so he could just float the cue ball down underneath the eight ball. He's still got a decent opportunity here. I think you'll see him go to the top rail and then maybe to the right side rail with just a little bit of stun outside. Oh, this is a good shot. This is a good shot. Yeah, and he played that very well. And this is kind of what I expected here. Um, the break is going to rule them all, and it's who makes the first mistake, or possibly, in a sense, who won the lag. Yeah, that's how good a standard we might get to see out here. Lag could be big. 1-1, one, one, both taking care of their opening racks. Race to seven, we started with 50 minutes, 43, 30 left to play. Yeah, uh, definitely not the uh, average as far as the racks. Um, looking at around three minutes and 30 seconds apiece, roughly. But uh, a little bit of navigating Billy had to do and Tyler had to do the same thing, so... It's interesting with Tyler and, and his pace of play because I think during the shootout, first match he just played natural, which is what he's playing now in terms of pace of play. Second match in the shootout, he, he could see he made a, made a big effort to play quicker because he didn't want the match clock to be as big a factor. But with it being 50 minutes for a race to seven, the match clock's only going to be a factor if you know we go to, say, Hill Hill. Maybe then we, we, we might get close, but even then it's unlikely. Well, and we saw it come into play last match against Tony, right? Oh, no. Too much. Too much power. Jumped it off the table. So this is going to be cue ball in hand anywhere on the table. That's the difference here. If you scratch off the break, then it's just cue ball in the kitchen. But here, anywhere on the table is good. Well, that may be the one mistake that might cost Tyler this match because the, the level of play is that high right now. 
it only takes one mistake. Kind of what we saw with uh, Corey and Chris. Corey uh, just wasn't able to overcome a, a, a couple of small mistakes, and Chris absolutely on fire. Billy has a big shot right here. Maybe didn't get right where he wanted, but it, uh, he's going to be okay here. If he can just slip past the seven ball on his way up the table, would you should be fine. Do you think he would have preferred to deal with the two down the table before going up? Yeah, I, I do. I, I, I think in that situation there... I think he was attempting to get on the 13 yeah. so he could then play the 10 um, because he really wants his out ball to be this 12 ball. He wants that to get to the 8 ball, but um, now he's going to have to work a little harder for it. And in a situation where he received ball in hand off the break, you don't expect Billy to make a, uh, a shot shape error like that. But hard to call it an error when he runs the balls like this. Yeah, maybe just a, a rerouter, not really a an error. Billy looking to steal the rack. That's it, Billy. Uh, in, in this situation like, like this, you have to hold your serve. You have to score on your break. And unfortunately, Tyler, with the big break there, cue ball off the table, ball in hand, and Billy Thorpe steals the rack and will be breaking the next one. Yeah, that's the, the first kind of one against the, the head, really. And, uh, yeah, like I say, Billy now has it in his own hands. He just has to take care of business on his side. But it's a long, you know, there's a long way to go. I, I always feel as high a standard as, as we see. That might be a twist or turn along the way. Yeah, and Billy uh, looking pretty relaxed. And uh, Tyler sitting in his chair and kind of has the thousand-yard stare. Just uh, very almost stoic and concentrated. Billy there with a good, another good break. A good pop there. And now the issue here is the 2 and the 13. That's your problem area. A lot easier to solve with solids than it is for the stripes. So you feel he has to go solids here. I think so, and, and uh, this shot, in particular, this combo shot, of big importance, because if you are going to do anything that involves that 13, that 2 ball, you have to do it well, because you don't want to stick your 7 ball as well as the 2. And Billy kind of just thinking about what he wants to do and trying to find a... Wow, that was a good shot. He did exactly what I spoke about. You have to get both of those balls out and available, and that's what he did. The three ball now, it doesn't pass in the bottom right-hand corner, and I can't tell if it goes in the side, but even if it does, he's going to have to have a really good angle like this. He's not going to take it now, though, I don't think. If it goes in the corner, there's no issues at all. So I think it probably does, looking at it. Well, and it must with the way he's playing this. No, he's come back for it in the middle. Come back for it in the side and overdone it. So that tells us it can't go. Well, he's going to have a good opportunity to try it again with this six ball. Just float up the table. Try and give yourself something. That the two's in an odd spot here. If he can use the two ball to get out in the middle there. Now he's uh, trying to look for a backup plan, which is the corner. And his ability to uh, 
get out here will tell us just really how concentrated he is. Uh, it looks good, but I'm trying to read his body language here. Yeah, I think he's happy enough. Yeah, it looks like he's just trying to navigate rolling forward. Uh, it's it's very tight going past that 13 ball. Wow. How good are those? Well, it's the one down the table that really stands out. You know, he didn't have much room to land, and he, he got it perfect. Yeah, didn't didn't have very much room going past that 13 ball either. And like you said, absolutely perfect. Billy Thorpe takes an early lead here. Three to one. Still a lot of pull left. Tyler has opportunities to get back in this, but he's going to need a mistake from Billy. Yeah, that's all four from the break. Putting so much pressure on the breaker. Billy being two in front means if he takes care of business every time on his break there's absolutely nothing that Tyler Starr can do. Yeah, I think it's important here for Tyler to uh, not take a ton off of his break because generally when you throw a ball off the cue ball or you scratch or something you make a, a, a you want to make a subtle change to your break but sometimes you end up making too much of a change. So it's important here for Tyler, and he knows this, that he just needs to make the smallest change to take a little bit of power off that to ensure that he still makes the ball. And I think you'll see here a noticeable difference. Good reward for a very good break. Yeah, the, the hardest part about this is the fact that your really only decent shot is at the stripes, and you have a stripe being blocked by a solid here. No, yeah. no question. The only shot he has is at the stripes. Yeah, tricky this. This is maybe something to look back on at the end of this rack. Just unfortunate that he's not able to see a solid. What's the plan going to be then? Use the 10, maybe? Should be able to get good shape on the 10 to be able to do that, but might be quite late in the visit. Yeah, the only other thing I can think of, and it's kind of a wild card, is trying to manipulate the contact on the five ball and allowing the 11 to follow into that corner pocket almost like a real first shot but the angle is very difficult okay I think he might attack it here is he looking at what the, the line is narrow there's not a huge gap I just wonder if he's looking at one rail here And him elevating his cue tells me that, yes, he's trying to get further down the table here. Oh, okay, two rails into it, but it's still, that was the plan. Bigger window off two rails. It's, it's done well to get there, though, and it hasn't really worked. Well, it hasn't worked at all. Well, so, actually, I, I actually kind of like this. I think if he can shoot the 15 ball and get a slight angle on the 10, he can come in right behind it. But... Uh, because of where the 15 ball is, that angle is very difficult to get. It looks like he might be going up and trying to go three rails around. And he's going to be short significantly. And I don't, I don't disagree with the decision on that shot. Um, he knows it was probably the right shot. Uh, just a little short here. But now you're really in a tough predicament because Billy playing well and with the lead need to come here with something great. I think this goes through the gap. This might 
could work out for him. He's going to be moving a lot here. Oh, he went for the bank in the end. Oh, he, he's going to make it. He's going to make it. Oh, wow. Wow. Well, and he's going to have to do another one like this. I don't. I actually think the five ball is keeping him from being able to cut the 11 up the table. So I, I don't really know what you're going to do here. He has a plan, though. Oh, wow. Clever effort. Trying to use the bottom rail on the four ball, but not to be. So first chance goes in open play in the match. Another opportunity here for Billy Thorpe. And this is, this is big, because if Billy gets this rack, and he should, He's four to one and has the break. Yeah, both players, former Moscone Cup champions. But uh, today they are on the opposite side of the felt and they are absolutely in full concentration mode. Billy Thorpe, the banker from Ohio looking to add eight ball to his repertoire. Just a few shots away from taking a 4-1 lead. Beautiful and precise as this. Billy just absolutely working through the rack as smooth as possible. Yeah, really simple. Making it look nice and simple out there. Yeah, it has not put a foot wrong yet. And just like that, 4 1 to Billy, Tyler Steyer. In a bad spot here. Still some time to make that adjustment. And Billy feeling good, having a little fun with the crowd, smile on his face, taking the time in between the racks to enjoy a little conversation. But when that rack comes off, he is in full concentration mode. Next break's big. If Billy puts another one. Out is kind of two breaks of serve ahead, and the standard that's being played, the way these guys run out, you feel like that's a tall order for Tyler to turn that one around. And Billy would have it in his own hands. It's a case of whether he can then take care of business. But if this one goes against him, it's back to just the one break. Let's see how he does on this one. So far, been very good. They exploded really well. Oh, I thought he was going to scratch. Would have been unfortunate, but he has stayed on the table. He has some decisions to make out there, though. Stripes aren't great. But nor are solids. I think solids are better than the stripes, but what are you doing with the five ball? Four ball's guarded. There's room, but you've got to get there. Eight ball's fine. Stripes have the, the issue with the 11 and a few up the table. And then you've got the 13's a problem as well. So all in all, get to work on the solids. Yeah, it's always tough when you have a layout where you have uh, the same situation with opposite sides on the top right of the table. You have the 15 in front of the 5 blocking. And on the bottom right, you have the 6 blocking the 13. So work to be done all the all the way around the table um, I think your only saving grace here is that 14 ball and 8 ball it looks like they're tied and I'm not sure if the 14 ball goes clean it looks kind of funny to me so besides the 5 does go so that's one problem really out the way and therefore solids would by far and away the better set because this was the big problem ball I felt but once this one's out the way 
He's a good chance. Yeah, still has to navigate the one ball, um, but he'll be able to connect that with the 14. I'm, I'm sorry, the 4. So just wants to play this as smooth as possible and not bump the 11 too far. That's perfect. Mm, may have been better for him just to catch the that a little bit fuller or the underside of it. Where's he going to take the one from here? I think he's just going to play it soft on the side. Oh, he's done well. He's done well to hold that well. Yeah, that's and that's not an easy ball to hold no, at all. It, there was a, there was a ton of angle on that to hold that well was a, a very good shot. Obviously, he had a line nice as well because if he uses the twelve, it helps. So a good shot, and it's going to be another racket. And just wants to. Oh yeah, he's playing so well. A long way back for Tyler. Billy Thorpe is flying. Yeah, and uh, really playing at a top, top level. So the winner of this match is going to play Chris Melling in the finals. And on the other side of the bracket, uh, I'm sorry, other side of the division, we have a wonderful ladies final coming at you shortly after this so gonna crown two champions in two matches should be a uh, great uh, end to the event we've had a wonderful weekend here started off with the shootout three events I think all in all over 300 players between the minis and the shootout and all three divisions lots of pool played here and uh, I, I think the thing that jumps out to me is how well everything ran as far as a time schedule I think there was one night where we ended past 11 o'clock yeah this is a big thing isn't it to make sure that I mean players want to know when they're playing and and make sure it you know they don't want to be playing till silly o'clock in the morning and, yeah. and all that sort of thing so getting the schedule right is a huge part of running a big tournament well and, and it's not something that uh, the United States has a lot of so um, having such a large event that also offers many tournaments as well and stuff like that um, it's very difficult to stay on schedule and uh, it, the, the, the team the tournament team has done an amazing job at that as we're right where we need to be to have a perfect conclusion on this Sunday night here in Shreveport. And Tyler here. That's not gone to plan. He's put the one into an awkward spot. And oh, he's still got two more issues at the top of the table. Yeah, very difficult. The four five. It, maybe the five goes top left corner, but not much way of getting there. He's just going to try and roll forward. He's on the one. It's a poor angle. And trying to measure in his head what he's looking for here. It's very difficult. He looks like he's cutting this ball a lot more than... Oh, oh, wow. Did not look like it went in the side. Well, now at this angle, it, it looks like there is a small gap between the five and the four. Now, this is going to be an absolute flyer of a shot. But if he's able to manipulate that gap, that four ball might go in the corner. Oh, okay. Yeah, cut it in. Wow. That's excellent. Well, when, when you're playing shots as good as that and as creative as that, it is a little difficult to call them there. Tyler shot the five ball great. He's got a little bit of a tough shot here. Just a, really needs to get back down to the table for the eight ball. 
That's a good shot. Holds it off the 12, and he has the 8. Yeah, and the, the confidence in that shot because he did have to hit the 12 square in the face for that cue ball to stop moving. The confidence in that shot tells me that Tyler uh, still is, is, he's not considered himself out of this by far. Yeah, did what he had to do. He wins first back in a while. They were 1-1, one, one, and then it was 5-1. So he's back to 5-2. And this was a very good shot. Played a couple in the visit, actually. All you can do is keep trying to take out the chances that come your way. If you don't get enough chances, there's nothing you can do. Right now, the way the match has gone, the way the day's gone for, for Billy Thorpe, it just feels like he's not going to give Tyler enough chances. I mean, Billy's run today has been quite incredible. He's gone through the whole tournament really, you know, pretty much unscathed. But today in particular, 7-4 this morning against Roberto Gomez, and then things really started to heat up because he took out Jeffrey DeLuna 7-1, and then Shane Thompson 7-2, and here he is 5-2 here. Missed very few chances all day. Oh no. Absolutely horrible outcome there. And I Simon, I just glanced at the match clock. We have a just under 17 minutes until that 10-second shot clock would come into play. And I was kind of thinking to myself, you know, that's a lot of time. But if Tyler were to make a big comeback here and get it, say, 5-5, we very well could dip into that. And uh, he needed a mistake from Billy, and he got one. He's got to take advantage of it now, though. Looking at the three-ball combination to get going. That's well executed. Moved the four-ball out, and look what he did here, too. He also tied that 4-3 up when he made that shot. So really opened everything up. I don't see him missing from here. Yeah, it's a pretty much perfect layout from here. So at 5-2, run these out, then it's his break. So he won't be saying it right now because he's only thinking about the puzzle, but next time Billy Thorpe touches the table, I want it to be 5-4. Ramp that pressure up. And Tyler uh, looks like he scaled back his pace a little bit um, early on in the first or second rack. It looked like he was kind of uh, uh, moving very quickly. Now it looks like he's slowed down a little bit, just really taking his time and being precise with everything. Tyler striking the ball really well now, and a few uh, glimpses of uh, kind of cracks in his game in the early going. But it looks like he's playing to win now. Needs a little help from Billy, but like you said, the idea of 5-4 Sounds a whole lot better than 5-2. Yeah, easier to say it though. Tyler's the one that's got to put them on the board, but that's certainly the plan. I like what he did there. Really kept it simple. Um, didn't have to do much, and he didn't. Yeah, 
there. No issues with the eight ball. And it is five to three. Just ticked into the second half of the match during that rack. And Tyler gets himself back within a couple. He's worked quite hard to get through today. He's had some tough matches. Had probably the longest match of the day a little bit earlier on. So he's had a lot less sort of downtime than, than Billy. He won't care if it gets him over the line. I'm just looking at his way through today. 7-1 he started off this morning really quickly actually. Over Donald Weathersby. And then a really tight drawn out match over Lance Schofield. It really did go on quite a long time. Wasn't played on the TV table and immediately out there onto the TV table to play Tony Chowan and 7-6 to six. and there was drama at the back end of that one. Tony had his chance to win it, didn't take it and that gets him through to this stage. Obviously this is all from the single elimination part. There was obviously uh, plenty of matches prior to today. Scaled back. Watch out, cue ball. He would have been nervous for a second. He thought originally he was like, oh, it's safe, and then there was a ball flying towards it. But he's, he's done pretty well here. I, I really like the solids. I think everything's kind of uh, lined up for him. <coughs> On the other side of the final 32, Billy Thorpe uh, sending Roberto Gomez home 7-4, to four, and then turning around and sending... The only other Filipino in the bracket, Jeff DeLuna, sent him down with 7-1, to one, one of the most spectacular performances we've seen on the TV table. And then besting Shane Thompson before getting here. So, a road to victory has been uh, tough for both of these guys, and they both persevered very well in those matches. But only one will meet Chris Melling in the final. Big question mark over the four. It goes, I think, but it's tight. I won't want to be trying to do too much when he plays it. Yeah, I think the best situation there would be to take it last. That way you can just r roll up across that top rail. But I do think it does go. The question is getting on it on the right angle obviously here playing for the six ball very good shot there and here this might be the best angle that he's gonna get so he may take this ball here Seems like the, the easiest way to go about it. Yeah, it's just going to have to inject a little bit of pace. So once we precise with the, the pot, there isn't a full pocket for him. Yeah, just used it all. But nicely controlled. Yeah, beautiful draw shot there. It looks like he may just stun this ball out. Perfect. Give himself a wider angle. That way when he makes this ball, he can just use that little bit of stun to drift towards the eight ball rather than away from it. Yeah, just making sure you get the right side of it, isn't it? And you do that, it just makes connecting it all together so much easier. Well, and maybe didn't want to be that close to the rail, but he'll he'll be fine. Just needs to hit it smooth. There we go. Very nicely done. Three straight from the break this time for Tyler Steyer, and it's got himself right back into it. We said following that break from Billy that the next time he touches the table, Tyler will want to make it five to four. 
that's what he's done and it is back to Billy who at 5-1 was probably breaking off thinking come on then let's make a ball get to the hill get this match wrapped up all of a sudden he's got Tyler at his heels yeah and for Billy here uh, this is probably the most important wreck uh, because you don't want to give Tyler the free confidence of of being he'll uh, you know even up five five because uh, at five five the, the two two race in Tyler's head is going to give him so much confidence and breaking. So Billy really needs to get this rack here. Feel comfortable and big pop break. Uh, the timing on that, he was extremely quick with the snap. And unfortunately, no balls down. Wow, what a turnaround in this match. Tyler's got an opportunity to make it 5-5 from 5-1. And have the break as well, if that was to happen. And I think if, you, if you'd if you asked uh, 10 people who, who they thought played the best today, I think over five of them would say Billy Thorpe. Yeah. Um, Tyler here looking to send Billy back to Ohio. There is nothing you can do if you are sat in your chair, though. If you don't get the chances at the table, it doesn't matter how well you're playing. Such a brutal game we play, isn't it? Tyler just about run out of time there. Wanted to go for another wonder, trying to figure out his, his pattern here, but the clock got him. Yeah, taking his time, trying to plan his route. Can he get out from the the one without disturbing the stripes? I think he may actually try and get the bump to give the seven a, a pocket. Oh, he's okay. Oof. For a second, I thought that was going to end up absolutely horrible. It's just pulled up and given him a shot. And I, I do th I do think he was trying to give it a little bump to just open up a, a, a playable shot on the seven, but it ended very awkwardly. Referee staff going in for the good look to make sure there was no foul there. Still not done here. The five ball going down into the corner. It is a big pocket. You can use the rail to help the 15 ball, or to, to help the five ball go in. The 15 ball is going to cover it. Played that well. Yeah, that's a that's a really good shot, a really good play there. Tyler uh, really turned it on in the last half of this match. And what we what looked to be almost dominance by Billy Thorpe early on has quickly turned around, and we're now looking at the possibility of a five-five game here. Race to seven, uh, 16 minutes and some change left on the match timer. It's one thing to get these opportunities, but from 5-1 down, he's been brilliant. Not easy. Pressure on him. Any mistake at any time, essentially, he's out the tournament. So to run, five, to run four straight, excuse me, off the break is very impressive. He'll want to make it five here, though. And the match has kind of swung round on that pressure now because we talked about the, the lag at the very start and that's now to Tyler's advantage. Yeah, and I, I I just wonder if uh if Chris Melling is hanging out in the rafters somewhere, uh checking out 
how this match is going because he does have the winner. And uh, Tyler and Billy both looking impressive, and Tyler really uh, bringing this comeback to life. He's going to need a good break to keep it going. Quite a quite a good crowd out there uh, watching this semifinal. And the cue ball goes flying across the table but stays on. And a monster break here. He'll take that. This has worked out nice. Chance for a fifth straight. Uh, do you like the stripes or the solids here? I like the I like the solids. I think uh, he sees the ability to play the five ball here immediately. He has a couple different ways he could do it, but where he can move that four ball. Yeah, the only reason I, I just don't like the 15, I mean, you could play it. If you don't play it now, which you could, it's thin, then you've got to play a good shot to get up there and get on it. So Yeah. But, you I mean, if you said you're right, you've got to go so, uh, stripes here, you, you wouldn't be too disappointed. You know, they're very, very good, but... Yeah, all in all, if you were to shoot the 15 now, the, the stripes may have the better layout, but... Uh, There's just yeah. no need. Yeah. And maybe could have hit that one better. I think he was trying to leave himself for that four ball. I thought he might go for the movement on it, the breakout. You can be sure he'll be trying to set up a better shot on this four ball very quickly. I think he's done it here. Only other ball in question is going to be the six ball. He's looking at playing the four here to the seven. I think this is an interesting pattern here. Yeah, I'm, I was trying to work it out myself. Whether you know, is it going to work out well for him? You can leave the six up there and and have that as your last ball without real too much of a problem. But you, then you've got to get from the two to the three. I think in a perfect world, you would want your two ball to be the last ball you shoot. But because of the way everything's yeah. kind of laid out, it, it makes it very tricky. He's got a touch on the, the straight side here. I think he's got just enough to work with, though. And I think we'll see him play this ball. Just uh, feather up for the three. And then, as you said, play the six to get to the eight. And that'll put him on the hill if he can manage to do it. Elevated up over this tin ball. Doesn't make the shot the easiest to get shape on. And you see there, he, I think he is a little further out in the middle of the table than he wanted to be. Um, shouldn't be too big of an issue. Just make sure your speed control is correct. It's better than being the other way. Too straight hurts you. Plenty of angle does not natural now just make the part and you're on the eight ball he played the speed perfect couldn't ask for a better setup on this eight ball and Tyler Steyer in just a few seconds should be going to the hill in this match with Billy Thorpe very impressive indeed five straight chances five straight run outs and early on we said that he would need some help from Billy, and uh, twice now he's gotten it. Yeah, from 5-1 up, Billy's just sat there and played two shots, two dry breaks. It's half game at times, isn't it? He's played, well, he hasn't made a mistake in the match, really, has he, other than breaking dry, which is pretty critical. <laughs> yeah, um, and Billy here, I think if you're Billy, you really just have to go to the table here and uh, f for forget what Tyler's done up to this point and focus on yourself. Uh, make the ball off on the break 
uh, and then have any shot and then just do what you did in the first two games. Play it simple, play it uh, smart, and tie it up hill hill. And we're down to our 12 minutes and 50 seconds. If Billy were to win this rack, it's inevitable that we would be down to that 10 minute mark. And Tyler has felt that pressure. Oh, can you believe it? Three straight dry breaks from 5-1. And Tyler has a chance to go and win the match. Uh, there, so there's a, there's a small issue with this. If if he wanted to take the, the stripes, he has no shot here. The 7 and the 3 are in kind of a weird spot. Does the 7 play into the 3 cleanly? I think there's plenty of room for it, yeah. Okay. I think he's okay. It's just controlling the shot. Where does the, where does the 8 go? Where does the 7 go? It shouldn't really be moving too far. Looks like he's trying to take it out right now while he has the opportunity. He played a very good shot to get an angle. Maybe even too much. Well, he got two minutes to that 15 seconds of shot, so he, if he gets out in this visit, it won't really be in play. Just at the back end of it, but should be in, in line by then if he's going to get out. Yeah, I think the, the worst thing that could happen is something go wrong and, and be down on a tough eight ball on your very first shot clock that's only 15 seconds. Tyler here again looking at that combo. He's been looking at it for a minute or so now. Oh, he finally, that's perfect. Uh oh. Seven ball got a little high there. It should go in the side though. Tyler Steyer set up perfectly for this win over Billy Thorpe. He's just got a few more balls to make here. And we're 45 seconds away from that 15 second shot clock. Shouldn't be an issue for him. Yeah, he's exactly where he wants to be now. Just has to hold himself together. And it will be an incredible turnaround. And what a story for Billy here. Um, really putting on a clinic against Jeff DeLuna and having a huge lead in this match. And Tyler Sire showing how much grit he has, and he looks to be coming back to win this. Will be what we saw him play Jeff DeLuna, and he was flawless. I know that he played Shane Thompson, and he was flawless, and he's been flawless here, yet he's not going to make it through. Sometimes you just don't get the chances you need. But he thought, other than dry breaking, he really just has done nothing wrong here. And now we are down to that 15 second shot clock. Luckily, Tyler's in a prime position to just play the shot smooth. And that'll be the only shot where it really comes into play here. Tyler Sire about to cement his spot in the finals against Chris Melling. Just an incredible turnaround. 5-1 down. And he gets the next six chances, and he runs the match. Very impressive from Tyler Steyer. He marches on to the final. He will take on Chris Melling for the Louisiana Open title. Billy Thorpe will have to come again. Brilliant to see him here in Louisiana. Not to be. Nothing he could do about it, but it is Tyler Steyer that moves on. We'll move on as well. Ladies' Open final is coming up very shortly after we get a few words from Tyler Steyer.
Welcome back down to the arena. Can a few words with Tyler after a well, just a phenomenal performance, a phenomenal match, really. Um, what were you thinking at five-one down? Uh, the old saying, you know, one one ball at a time. You yeah. know, uh, I won the leg, which was huge. So, yeah. you know, being five-one down, I just need him to make you know two mistakes for then to him to feel some pressure, right? Yeah. And I feel like if I can get the pressure on him towards the end of the match, then you know maybe I can squeeze another mistake out of him. But uh, Obviously, the break left him. Uh, I got a little bit fortunate for that to happen, um, and I was, I'm just cranking him, you know. So yeah. if I break dry, I'm pretty surprised. So um, yeah, it's just how the game goes sometimes, right? Yeah, absolutely. It always amazes me, though. I mean, yourself and, and all the other top players, you're more than capable of running six straight from the break. You know, that that isn't uncommon. Yeah. But it's to do it when you need to do it, when you're five sure. one down and your opponent's playing kind of lights out ball as well. Yeah, yeah. And I, I watched the the. the what is it, the quarterfinal match that Billy yeah. played? He played fantastic. Believe, yeah, he really played good. unbelievable. So um, it's just how the sport goes sometimes. Yeah. You know, it's uh, it's, it's tough. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? do, so. do you try and put that out of it, though? Do you try and let the fact that Billy's playing so well, that you, you still want to tell yourself that you might get the help you need, whether that's a dry break or a mistake from Billy? Uh, not really. I mean, we're all capable of breaking dry, no matter how good you hit them. Yeah. Um, so you know that. I mean, you don't expect three in a row. I think he broke dry three in a row. You maybe, did maybe, three in a row, yeah, because yeah, you ran so, you ran six straight from yeah, the break. Yeah, it was, was kind of sick. And I knew that I didn't have the greatest looks. You know, my my layouts were kind of yeah iffy at best. And um, you know, over time that should change. You know, you shouldn't you shouldn't get yeah. five or six you know bad layouts in a row. So um, I got a couple of easy ones in the middle, and then I made a tough one to yeah. to get on the board and keep going. Overall, though, today you've, you've been made to kind of go through it. You've had to work incredibly hard every single match, it feels like, apart from the, the first one this morning. I guess there's, you've had to play a lot of ball at this point to, to get through to the final. I guess that's what you, you work hard for. Yeah, yeah. I mean, bar box eight ball, it's just yeah. like uh, a lot of players can run out, Yeah. right? Especially if the break is working, especially if the balls lay the right way. Yeah. I mean, you can be the better player and have the balls lay wrong and you got almost no chance. So yeah. it's uh, obviously a bit of luck, a bit of skill, and, you know, capitalize at the right time and see what happens. Quick word before we let you go on the final we got coming up after the women's final. You're taking on Chris Melling. It's a box office match if there ever was one. It's got to be one to look forward to. Yeah, I wouldn't want to have anybody else because yeah. he's probably the best eight ball player in the tournament, uh, rightfully so. So I'm, I'm looking forward to you know trying to take him down. Well, we're certainly looking forward to it. Best of luck when yeah, we get you out thank there. Thank you. Appreciate uh, it. We have gone red. I think you can see that in the arena here. That means we are going to the women's open final. It's after this short break.
time to hand out another trophy then. It'll be the third one of the weekend following the shootout and the Junior Open. It is time for us to turn our attention to the Women's Open. And not just a trophy, but a nice stack of cash as well. This is going to be interesting. Patricia giving out instructions to our ladies. We'll be starting in just a second. First time out there for both of them in the arena, playing in this sort of environment, playing with the match clock, playing with the short shot clock. It will be interesting to see how they adapt to the environment. It's not easy when you're coming from playing on the outside tables where there's no shot clock and no match clock. You're having to sort of deal with, with the elements out there. And it'd be interesting to see how Tiffany and Michelle deal with everything. And both of these ladies had an absolute grind of a semifinals matches, um, both going uh, very long. So this is going to be interesting to see how they handle the pressure. There is a large crowd here, and of course, a 50-minute match clock. Uh, if it gets down to that 10-minute mark, uh, we may see some unexpected errors. Yeah, race to seven, isn't it? But yeah, you say the the semi-finals. I mean, what was interesting is that Michelle McDermott, she was four 0 in front of Brittany Maynard in her semi-final, ended up winning it in a hill-hill battle, which is you know a huge turnaround from Brittany. For Tiffany, it was a very long, drawn-out six nil. And so I watched actually a large portion of that match. One of the players is uh, from my area, and uh, Brittany Williams played a phenomenal match almost every rack coming down to the eight ball so the score doesn't tell the entire story of that match but nonetheless tiffany getting a large win there it's got to feel good about it and uh i hope both of these ladies play their absolute best i wish them luck and we're going to hand out a trophy at the end of it to claim the very first ultimate pool usa ladies champion yeah double elimination from the last well for 32 down to the last eight fully subscribed very quickly was this event so many players wanting to get involved and be a part of it yeah the ladies the first to fill up and within almost days yeah it didn't, like. it didn't take long at all it filled up very quickly But yeah, it'll be interesting. I think for me, this match will come now to who can deal with what they're going through right now. Who can deal with the environment, the fact there's a crowd out there watching, the fact they're playing on this big stage. You've got the cameras there, you've got the lights, you've got the match clock, you've got the shot clock. You know, who can deal with it the quickest and just start playing pool? We've seen a few matches with players experiencing it for the first time out there, and they haven't been able to deal with it. It's a case of if you can, and you just remember it's just a game of ball, then you know you can settle in and play better. Yeah, I 100% agree. Um, the 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 arena, the lights, all of that pressure, it can do two things. It can one make it hard to adapt, and then therefore it may take a few racks to get comfortable. Or two, it can absolute bring the pressure to you and make you play um, way over your head and uh, both of these ladies hoping that the pressure gives them the advantage here we go then Tiffany Brock to get us underway and he's going to be dry here in the opening rack Well, 
disappointment for Michelle there. Wasn't the easiest of opening chances, trying to make something happen, but that couldn't have finished too much worse. Because what's happened here is not only is she not on the next ball, she's opened up the stripes here. Yeah, able to make the good hit. Now going to open up the table for her opponent to do something with her, her suit. This is a really good chance for Tiffany to just get herself into the match here. Just find just a little bit of rhythm out there. The layout is decent. And for a first time out there, she does look calm. She doesn't look like it's taking too much of a toll on her. Tough bump there. Still some work to do on the rack. Good shot there. That's a tough cut in the side, and she was able to uh, slice that ball in and be able to see her next ball. So just got a little bit more work to do. Yeah, I just feel like it's starting to become heavy work here. I think there's a good possibility that she can break this ball out here. I think that's what she's going to try as well. it worse needed just to slide by it it did go top left not anymore whether she could have taken it and connected to the bottom probably without the the cannon so slightly unfortunate because it's only just off Just overcut it there. We're going to see Michelle come back to the table. The seven ball in a tough spot, but if she can manage to move that ball and get a shot, she has a good chance of getting out here. Very nice slice on the one ball. Seven's the key. And she's going to have a couple opportunities to break that ball out. It's just a matter of if she can get the angle. She may have it here. This does look perfect, just to play the play it natural. A real full contact on the ten. Keeps you on the two and pops the seven into play. Yeah, and, and what you said there was the key is it's natural almost. So no need to do anything extra with the cue ball. A lot of times players tend to try and force the cue ball to do what they want when the angle is just right there. Ah, just slid off it. Yeah, and I don't think she got an angle for the seven to go in the corner. She's got a tough two ball to contend with. Looking for the bank. Yeah, that's very good. I think she's going to have to make another. 
depends on, I think it's seven goes, so it depends on what the natural line is. If the seven goes and the natural line is avoiding the side, which I think it is comfortably, then you should be able to just track the, the eight ball, but the bank kind of keeps it simpler. Well, it is the bank. How about that? Well, that's a great start to this uh, ladies' finals. Able to make two banks in a row. Just needs to finish it off with this eight ball. Just steadying herself. And does not have an extension. It's just a blind shot, really. Just awkward enough. I do believe the time clock uh, got her a little worried there. She rushed that shot. Not the easiest layout now for Tiff. Uh, for, I'm, yeah, I'm sorry, for Tiffany. She's going to have a tough opening shot. She's going to try and play what, three or four rails. Misses the 14, unfortunately. Trying to catch it very thin to play the, the four rails behind the 10. And that's going to cost her the frame. Simple eight ball for Michelle McDermott to get the opening rack on the board. There it goes. Nine. Important for Tiffany there to just uh, completely forget that happened. Uh, Got to get those negatives out of your head. Uh, Michelle will be breaking. But still a lot of time and a lot of pool left in this ladies' championship match. Michelle from Tulsa, Oklahoma State Master Champion. And she's gone through the field really comfortably this weekend. Only really the semi final that she's been pushed too closely. And she was a long way in front in that one as well before getting pulled back. Come through the winner's side. The closest match was she had a couple of 6 threes on the, on the winner's side. 6-3 in the quarterfinal against Julie Stevenson and then that Brittany Maynard match we've already talked about in the semi-finals where she had lost her comfortable lead and pegged all the way back to a hill-hill battle but she did get over the line yeah, and she should be pretty familiar with Brittany Maynard as well they're both from the same area that Oklahoma uh, pool scene is is a lot of people and a lot of good players, Brittany and Michelle, both from that area. So I'm sure it was a familiar battle for both of them. One we get to see her break for the first time in the match. Solid on the front ball, but from quite wide. Was able to make a ball. And only a few issues here that need to be worked out at 310. It does the 15 pass, the 5, in which case it's only the 10 that's the problem. I'm opting to take the stripes here, and unfortunately not getting a good second shot. See what she can manage to do here.
the 14 is going to be an issue and obviously still got the 10 so work to be done I think the, what you've got to be careful of in this situation is if you don't get out you don't want to open everything up for your opponent nothing says you have to run the rack got two big problems on the table solve the problems then run the rack and I think uh, by accident she may be able to work something out on this 14 ball with maybe a bank or a uh, even a two rail bank. Cue ball. No, it's going to fall. So that is going to give Tiffany a really good chance to get going here. Cue ball in hand. You play short side on the three. And then the only ball that has to really think about it's going to be the six ball, but a few ways to get short side position on the six, so all pretty good here. Good opening shot there. And that's going to be trouble. I think she may still be able to see the four ball. Going to have to hit this ball and do a little something special to keep the cue ball where she can make another. See how she handles it. Definitely didn't want to move the eight ball that close to the pocket. Could have been a little scary for. I think Michelle here has a great opportunity to take a 2 0 lead. Just a few balls to make. Needs to work out the 12. <laughs> Needs that good angle on the, the 10. Looks like she's got it. Doesn't really need to move the 12. Could just drop in behind it. Perfect angle to move it if she chooses to. I like the idea of that just over hit. The only thing that made dropping in behind it difficult is you just did not want to be queuing over the four. So just slightly overhit it because of that but this is still makeable tough shot of course well, and that is absolutely not what she wanted here and looking at taking a 2-0 lead unfortunately there uh, rough 8 ball and now we're tied at 1-1 one and I'm sure she'll be thinking about that one for at least the next two or three minutes. Yeah, how about that? You didn't get to see it on the show, but Tiffany pulled a, <laughs> a very funny face as if, as if to say, well, I'm on the board, but didn't really have to do anything. I think we saw something similar yesterday with uh, Billy Thorpe. And Chris Reinhold. Happened a couple of times, didn't it? Yeah. And again, this is the point in the rat in the match where I expect to see these ladies kind of loosen up a little bit. They both made some mistakes early. But this is the time where I feel like one of them is going to open up, get comfortable, and start running some balls. I think winning the rack will help Tif Tiffany of course obviously it's a, a rack on the board but it's not one I always think that you need to go and win a rack to sort of settle in and just having the, the rack kind of handed to you isn't quite the same although obviously it can't hurt nothing doing on the break so Michelle will get first look at this rack
nothing really jumping out as what I would prefer to shoot at. She likes the solids. The only issue there is just the seven ball if she can get a good angle. She uh, may be able to get out of this rack. I don't think it's the sevens too bad. You've got access to the three. And you've got, I thought you could access the three from down the table, but you can get there from the, the two as well. Yeah, that's nice. That is nice. Drop it in. Unfortunately, it's just a, a turn too much angle. So, question to me is, does the seven pass the eight to the corner? I think it does. Might be the ball. The problem is, if you take the three, you're going away from the seven, then the seven becomes a problem ball. Whereas, you take the harder shot now on the seven, gives you ch the chance to win the rack. And I think the, the time clock got to her there. She did have an extension that she could have used. But again, first time on the TV table, sometimes that just slips your mind. Well, she's got herself a good angle on the six. I don't think the eight ball is going to hamper her too much. I think the, the center of the cue ball is available. She may have to raise the bridge hand just a touch. Now needs to find the, the good cue ball. And I think the play here, just in this particular situation, is maybe just to try and go in and bump the seven out. Maybe get an opportunity for it in that top left corner. I like going that way, though. I know what you I know, agree with you absolutely. Try and give yourself as much chance. But going up the top way, assuming the seven does go in the corner, I mean, it goes in the side for sure, but... If it goes in the corner, then it, it's absolutely perfect here. Yeah. And she played it well. <coughs> and she's just got to navigate the shape on the eight ball, but you don't want to worry about it too much. Just make the seven. And you've obviously a good player, so you've made it to here. Just comes up a little short there. Um, luckily for her, the, the 15 and the 11... It's definitely something that Tiffany is going to have to worry about. She's got an opportunity for it here. I think the, the plan here is the, the safety. And I like that. Very smart play. play well there's this one thing just to sort of get the guaranteed safety there but I like the, the ambition just to pop them open make her potential clearance an awful lot easier in doing so yeah, and this could be the moment in the rack that Tiffany needed to uh, get a good opportunity to run the rack the way she wants to a ball in hand situation here allows her to pick her pattern And the eight ball didn't cover the 15, so Tiffany here again, getting her choice, can play this however she wants and get a chance to get on the board, at least in her mind, where she earned it. Yeah, and this is one where I really like the, the 11 last. I like the 15 first. Yeah, almost like a backwards, uh, yeah. working it in reverse, the 15 down. And then the 11 ball is just your out ball. Yeah. I don't think you want to be shooting the 15 to get on the 8. No, but it's not bad. It, it, I liked it first, but it doesn't have to be first because you've got the the 14, so you can you can go 15, 14, 11 as your last three. So you just need to get good shape on the 15 off this one here, off the 10. And in, in, in this situation, um, being an amateur player, what I really like to focus on is taking out the balls 
that give my opponent the easiest shot first because then if I do end up out of line and I were to miss a ball later on, I want to make sure that my opponent's one ball on the table is very difficult to get to. And I, I think she's played a little bit of that here, making the seven ball difficult. Doesn't need to do anything though, just make sure. So you got, of course, going into the eight ball, but the eight ball's going to pop on and off. It is fine. The cue ball's going to come a touch low, but you're only dropping the you're only dropping the 14 into the side dead weight. <coughs> so that's that's fine. And she actually set herself up pretty well for the 14 ball. The eight ball's not on the rail anymore. So she should be able to get out of here. This 14 tight to the side pocket. Sometimes these shots can be tricky. Good shot there. Maybe a little further than she wanted to move it, but the eight ball is there for. Wants to take the lead here. Oof. Used all of that pocket, did Tiffany Brock, but she is going to catch the lead here two to one after a rough start it looks like she's fallen into place and you have to say i know that she had the previous rack this one will make her settle in an awful lot more than the previous one that was a nice little counter out there that was very good and this is a cool little thing to see she is a louisiana native um in her bio, she's a runner-up of the 2018 Women's BCA Louisiana State Championship. But how about this? How would you like to jump onto Facebook or YouTube and see your middle school <laughs> English teacher in the finals of a pool tournament? Love it. That's Absolutely phenomenal. love it. <coughs> she's got some support out there and soon sat down and just looked at them. Very, uh... Very pleased with what she's just achieved because that should settle her in a lot more. Well, I must say, my teachers were never cool enough to be <laughs> pool players, so uh, kudos to Miss Tiffany Brock. I don't remember that long ago, so I couldn't even <laughs> comment on that. You're showing your age, Simon. Yeah. <laughs> good couple of decades ago. Well, Michelle here, uh, on her first break, she did have a pretty good spread, just needs to make a ball here. And uh, she's using, I've seen this break a couple times now. It's from the side, but going head on into the one ball. Ball down, and she's going to have an opportunity. I like it. It's a good pop on that break. She's really uh, hitting it well. And she's not the only one that's had success with that break. Yeah. Um, in our junior finals, young Braden was shooting the same break there. And uh, she shirt fouled, unfortunately. Just leaning over the top of the 7-6. Gives away cue in hand. When that's... Uh that's a little rough here, but um, it, it's almost like uh, the, the first rack with the eight ball situation. Um, so maybe we're seeing a, a tide turning here with Tiffany. Just a series of unfortunate events so far. It is Cuba with hand anywhere on the table, but choosing to stay in the kitchen. But probably for no other reason that she feels that's the best way to go here.
Doesn't want to get behind that 12. I think she came out okay here. The 4 is available to her. Really good play if she's able to get up and get a shot on either the 5 or the 3. Which she has done. Looking to go back to back visits here. Really building into the match. And I think she wanted that to stay a little bit more over the pocket. It's not as bad as it looks, though. This can be clipped back. Yeah, and Tiffany there really taking her time lining up that combo. This is going to be a little more difficult to control the cue ball on. Oof. Controlled it too well. She wanted to get down to somewhere nearer the, the straight here on the three. Not really a problem, just has to deal with the cue ball. Will it run too far for the eight in the side? Probably, so then you have to get the pace right on and off the bottom rail. And I think the best thing here is just try to navigate in between the balls. You don't want to touch that 11 ball. Yeah, back up and down the same line, middle of the table is perfect here. Oh, you called it. That's what I was afraid of. Now the question is here, the easiest kick at it, uh, is there a line to the side pocket on the right-hand side of the table? I don't think there is. I I'm kicking this at 100 miles an hour, trying to make something happen. Oh, what a shot. Oh, wow. What a shot. She said, I don't need 100 miles an hour. Yeah. I just need a smooth stroke. Yep. Just pick your spot, knock it in, and run out another rack. That's two on the trot. Back to back visits. Oh, it had the little flick on the way through as well. Yeah. It's still good enough to, to drop in. Well, and if, if Tiffany goes back to work on Monday morning, that's the shot she'll be telling her students about that helped her win the championship if she's able to keep this up. She does hold the lead. This is a race to seven in the finals. And Michelle just hoping to put that shirt foul out of her mind and get another shot at the table. Nothing you can do until you get back to the table. Three frames, sorry, three rats to one. 
Oh, and what a break there. Look at him make that. it three straight here. That was an excellent break. And she put all of her arm into that one. Tough shot on this one ball. It's hanging over the pocket, but it's at an awkward angle. She was able to make it. And a 3-1 lead for Tiffany here. We are just past the halfway mark of this match timer. 24 minutes and some change remaining. If she takes the four, she's going to have to hit it really well. Draw back out. Yeah, she's got... She's going to call her extension. Yeah, she looks like she's lining up the seven. I quite like the five. And just letting it slide back across. Then you've got the seven. You can get back to the middle of the table and you can get out from there. Yeah, even if she wanted to go really unorthodox, she could take the four and come down to break up the 14-6. But the time clock got her. And she was forced to make a quick decision. So Giants goes after taking her two previous visits to the table. This time she doesn't get out. So Michelle gets a chance first time since that shirt foul. I say chance loosely. This is certainly not a good chance, but chance at the table at least. Doesn't necessarily have to go here. And Michelle there calling her extension. I oh, decided to go aggressive, and well, that's backfired. Backfired massively. Tiffany here taking what I believe to be the right ball. She's just going to have to work out the five. Yeah, I was just wondering whether you play the five first, either in the side or you can go bottom right with the five, get back to the angle she just had and then Essentially, you're here without the five on the table. Now, it's not really a problem if you can just get to the middle of the table. And now only the real trouble. Uh, we've seen that she can make a ball that's similar to this. It's just a matter of getting a shot on the eight. She's played that one very well. She looks to be heading towards a big lead if she can make this eight ball. An opportunity to go up 4 1. A great shot. Very nice indeed. So it really turned around on Michelle. And. She was in, looking like being in good shape to go 2-0 and pretty much haven't seen her since. It's all been Tiffany Brock. And she gets herself to four, three away from the championship. And she's been going well today. Dropped very few frames, but actually dropped very few frames in the whole tournament. Really smooth progress through the double elimination into the single elimination knockout and just three away from completing the job yeah, and both of these ladies starting their tournament 
on Friday afternoon, continuing play through Saturday, and now all the way here, a beautiful Sunday night at the Shreveport Convention Center, and one of them will be crowned the Louisiana Open Women's Division Champion. And Michelle McDermott coming to the table, down three games, hoping that she can get back in the groove. Oh, no. It's really not happening for her. Yeah, tough scratch. Following the five ball into the pocket there. Has a good line here. The 13 ball looks like it might have trouble going cleanly to the pocket. The three ball may be impeding the angle it's needed. Yeah, that's nice. Just pulls it back. If you drop that in as a stop shot, you leave a little bit too much angle on the 12, so just pulling it back and not coming too far. You can now drop this in, keep it nice and simple. And now it's a case of does the 13 ball go clean? If not, this is the time to deal with it. But it does look like it probably goes clean. Just want to get a turn low on it, and then you don't have to play around with a three ball. And it looks like we're going to find out very shortly if that ball does go. I think she gave herself the best angle possible to make it. Clean shot. Not even a sliver of a foul there. Played it well. This is a great visit to the table. It really is. And she's she's found her stride. Yeah, looked a little bit edgy first couple of frames obviously got gifted that present in frame two since then i think she's played very solid indeed just that one error that didn't cost her but just run a few chances through and then once she got this eight ball for a five one lead elevated up on this eight ball it's always touchy being elevated. Ooh, squeeze it in. Um, she's made a wonderful kick into the side pocket last track, and now a beautiful shot into the side gives her a very nice lead. This is a lot of fun, and these ladies have shown a lot of heart throughout this tournament. Just a few more racks to go, and we will have a champion. <coughs> right now it feels like there's any one winner. We've really seen very little of Michelle since, well, since we uh, since we go, went 1-1, one, one, really. She looked like she was going to make that stronger start, get to the 2-0 lead, but really impressed with the way that Tiffany Brock has just 
turned up and got stronger and stronger as this match has gone on. And I think for Michelle, what she needs to do here is channel her inner Tyler Steyer and look for that big comeback. Yeah, we saw the previous match. If you weren't with us, Tyler Steyer was 5-1 down, raced to seven in the semifinals, and he had the next six chances off the break, and he won them all, ran the match. Seven frames to five, victory. Tough for Billy Thorpe, that, who uh, didn't make a mistake in the match, but still has to exit the competition. Just something to note here with the average uh, length of these racks. If we were to see Michelle get another rack on the board, that 15-second shot clock would be almost inevitable to be in play. I think if I'm Tiffany here, within reason, I would definitely want to uh, pick up the pace a little bit. All within reason. Don't want to miss balls because of it, but you definitely don't want to have to contend with that 15-second shot clock when you have such a large lead. Yeah, I think just a case of, from Michelle's perspective, keep an eye on the clock, but got to win the next rack. Got to find a way to get some momentum going again. When it rains, it absolutely pours, Simon. Yeah, surprised by that. Just a misjudged angle. Sometimes we trick ourselves into thinking that we can cheat the pocket a little more than we actually can. Honestly, Tiffany here has not really missed too many balls. She's been very good. Really has from, well for me, from frame three onwards. I think she's been brilliant. That's a good shot there. She's going to be careful not to shirt foul here. Having to play over the top of the one ball. Keeping a close eye on it. Well, and definitely used all of the available space in that pocket there. But it drops nonetheless. For two ladies who were just in very long, grueling matches where they did have a, a lot of time available to shoot, they both handled the shot clock fairly well. Agreed. Hasn't really been a factor. Tiffany's slightly annoyed because she's just gone past the, the straight on the nine. Straight would have worked, actually. Straight in would have been absolutely fine, but coming past it, she's now coming away from her work without good line. I do think if she's um, just very touchy on it, she can just roll forward with a little stun. She, she got a lot of movement there. This is going to make things interesting. The tin ball does cut and she has a bit of a blocker on the scratch. This would definitely be a highlight shot for her.
tries to go for something a little bit more expansive. Doesn't work. Almost came away pretty good yeah, there. Yeah, that would have been nice, but not to be. This is where Michelle's just got to get going. One good shot to land nicely on the six, and it doesn't need to be too bad. She's got room to play with, and it's there. straight after it and this is a good start for her here and then really from here just keep it simple and don't overthink it she's got a real good chance of getting herself back into this match maybe would have wanted just a little bit of an angle on the four. <coughs> I'm going to opt to play the seven here. Use the two to get back on the eight. Makes it a little bit tougher. But just got to execute it. Well, this is a tough shot now. Not just the pot, but getting onto the eight ball. That and the added pressure making this ball is extremely important for Michelle here. Oh, still not over yet. No, not going to get there. So. Yeah. Chance goes. Michelle really has just struggled since making the eight mid frame on frame two. Thought maybe she would opt to go for the 13 first. But she's able to make the 10 ball on the side. <coughs> Another difficult shape shot here. Queuing up with a lot of high right. She actually played that very well. And just one more good shot is going to put her on the hill. And if you take a look at our match clock, we are 30 seconds away from that 15 second regress shot clock. And the speed, the pace, and the tension of this match is about to heat up with Tiffany Brock on the hill. Yeah, another very good visit to the table for Tiffany Brock. Michelle McDermott has got so much work to do. And with 10 minutes left in this match, it will feel like an awful long way back into it. You feel Tiffany's got one hand on the trophy here. And a very worthy lead as well. She's played by far the best ball of the two players. Unfortunate for Michelle. Just feel like that issue in frame two has just kind of knocked her sideways and in this situation I think both players just need to be ready and somewhat prepared for that 15 second shot clock <coughs> and Tiffany has got to feel good so far but both these ladies really have their poker faces on not showing a ton of emotion. Tiffany uh, just trying to breathe it out, maybe talking to herself a little bit. Yeah, one more. One more rack. Yeah, that's exactly what she just said, too. <laughs> you <laughs> called it. <laughs> yeah, one more rack. Races to six all the way through the event. Race to seven here in the final. 
and Michelle here to brake and she'll get just the brake shot and the shot afterwards before that 15 second shot clock come into play. Needs a ball. Well, and here we are now. Tiffany moving around the table with uh, quite a bit more pace here. Yeah, this is going to be interesting. Overdone the cue ball. Yeah, pleading with the ball to stop. But uh, it did not. She's got a tough lay here. Watch the touch on the ball. Don't want to foul. And Michelle needs to take this opportunity to really dig and get a, a rack here. I mean, winning racks isn't really enough right now for Michelle. It's got to be winning racks in one visit. It's got to be quick fire. Minimum five required in the remaining eight minutes, 58 seconds. And these ladies averaging roughly four to five minutes per rack. That is a big ask. However, it can be done. And you feel like maybe the time clock, the pressure is really mounting against Michelle here. Played very well in her semifinal match. That's all that she needs to do right now is just keep it tight, wait. I mean, it's still, she'll, inside she's thinking that she's got one hand on the trophy, but it's not quite, and you just got to be patient. But. Well, and Michelle there with a really good shot there, moving the six ball out. She still has some work to do here in this rack. And this is going to get very difficult the more she goes, if she happens to win this one, it's, it's another rack after this. Missed a trick there for me in not playing further up the table. When you play further up the table, you're on a choice of the the five or the one she's just played. You know, if you're straight in on the five, then you've got yourself in great shape. And, you know, she's going to have to play a good shot. Still good chance to get out. She's just always trying to make it easy. And she did play that well. In the situation she's in here, I like playing this ball to the side, letting your cue ball naturally roll up to the top. It keeps your cue ball... Oh, watch the time. She called an extension. That's good. Just nice and smooth into the side pocket. Oh, it decides to go long. We'll oh. do all the same. Lovely that shot. Works. And um, for the first time in a while, Michelle McDermott gets a frame on the board since the opening rack of the match. And she needed that. Still a long way to go. Still a long way back into the match. But at least she's on the board and she's going to hang as tough as she can out there. Yeah, this road for her is going to be full of potholes and roadblocks. The time is not on her side. That rack lasting just around 3 minutes and 30 seconds. Yeah, and, well, current pace, even if she was to win the next two racks, it'd be a couple short. So you feel like you need to run a couple of really quick ones. And, and that and uh, Tiffany here, if... She's in this position. I would be using 13 seconds a shot. 
Yeah, take your time, use the clock, manage the situation. And absolutely nothing wrong with that. I know if I were in the position, that's exactly what I would be doing. Just needs to keep control of the table here with the ball down on the break, and she does. Watch out, cue ball. She's good. And a very tough rack here. Which is great for her. That's yeah. exactly what you know you want to see. I know that she'll be looking out going, oh, I wish I had a nice easy run out for the title. Well, it's fine. It's, it's a messy table. Just don't don't dig here. Just yeah. ask Michelle to be the one making the, the running here with this rack. I think I'd just play off the play off the 14 ball, go up to the top rail, and, and say over to you. There really is no benefit to keep going, unless you get out. But it's not. That's a lower percentage. And that's that's the other thing that. Uh she needs to focus on here is that she just needs to not make any huge mistakes no fouls no scratches no uh, no time fouls for sure and just let it let it play naturally and take your time now this is where it's going to get tough And she can't see below the center of the cue ball. So pulling back for this uh, 10, 14, 12 is going to be... Oh, she's going to take the 10 here. That's a very smart shot here. Not particularly worked out, though. Nowhere to go here. I think you'll see her shoot at the 14 down in the bottom corner. And she may end up in a real pickle here. And Michelle immediately out of her chair. I think she understands the situation, but she does have a tough layout here, almost seemingly impossible. At this point, she needs to make a lot happen here. Oh, yeah, that's certainly making it happen. How about that? And still uh, so much to work around, and with the time not on her side, she can't really afford to play a safety here. She's going to test it. Yeah, but that's another solid 15 seconds off the clock. Down to four minutes. And it was a good hit. Tiffany missing an opportunity there to <coughs> take her time on that kick, let that clock run. Good hit there. You see the pace is quickening for Michelle, but... Yeah, four racks in three minutes. It's just not going to happen. Yeah. She, she should get out here. She should get this one on the board. She needs to do it in about 30 seconds max. Even then, that's... No already nowhere to go, really. So she'll keep trying, but... You don't feel like it's going to be here. That's about the one thing she didn't want to happen. This, this is the best, uh, best potting I've seen her make do all day. She really has put together a strong rack here. It's just, unfortunately, I think it's too little too late. It's almost as though once the sort of the pressure's almost off because you can't get back into it, then you relax and you actually just let your arm out a little bit and start playing, but it will be too little too late. We're inside the final two minutes now. Tiffany's just in a comfort, comfort zone, just uh, do what she wants here. Should be able to just 
clip this in. Oh, oh wow. But, oh, that's amazing. That stayed on the table. That ball is can't quite believe that inside the edge of the pocket. It's defying gravity. <laughs> And here as we drop into the last 90 seconds, I think for Tiffany here, it'd be nice to simply win with the out. You know that you've won this already. Yeah, nice to get to seven. Just beat the clock here. Very nice. Eight ball for it then. And with just under 50 seconds left on the clock, Tiffany Brock is going to go down on the eight ball to win the women's division of the Louisiana Open. Does she make it? Never in doubt. Tiffany Brock is the champion. It really was a fantastic performance. Opening couple of frames weren't, uh, were a little bit scrappy, but the minute she got going, and found her form in frame three. She ran a few racks and took it to Michelle. And she walks away with the title and the trophy. And we'll crown her next. Well, welcome back down to the arena to hand out the Louisiana Women's Open Trophy. Has been a brilliant tournament here. All 32 players really putting on a show and a brilliant final as well. But there has to be a runner-up, so let's get Michelle McDonald up for a few words. Hi, Michelle. Uh, tough luck there in the final. You got off to a, a solid start, but it's a sort of mistake in, in rack two kind of set you back, and it was tough to get back in after that. Definitely. I made some mistakes that I shouldn't have, and that's what cost me in the game. But. How pleased with the, the run through the field and obviously to come to a tournament like this and, and make it through to the final? Uh, super pleased. I played very well. I felt like all weekend until just now. Um, I took a break for about six years. I had babies and 
uh, this is my first tournament back, so I'm pretty pleased with the outcome. That's incredible to, uh, to to hear that. I mean, what an amazing first tournament back. Um, how did you find uh, find Ultimate Pool USA? How did you find the arena? How 30 seconds and specifically the 15 as well? Um, Brittany Maynard's my best friend. Uh, she played in the tournament as well, and um, she told me about the tournament. And she taught me how to do the six ball shootout. And I was trying my hardest to get there, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, it would have been uh, would have been nice to see it get that far. But congratulations on a on a brilliant tournament, and uh, we look forward to seeing you again. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Our runner up. Well, it has been a brilliant tournament, but we have got a winner. Let's get Tiffany up for a few words before we hand her the trophy. Congratulations! Um, a brilliant performance there in the final. It felt like. It felt like from frame two onwards, once you'd got that one on the board, you settled in and you, you played some really good stuff from there. I was a little nervous, but um, I just tried to keep it together. I think the shot clock of 30 seconds kind of helped me not overthink and just pick something and shoot. And um, I think I shot pretty well overall. Yeah, you played some, some brilliant frames in the middle, sort of two, two, three, four, five. You kind of really took it away. And then once you go into the final 10 minutes and 15 seconds a shot, which is tough, you, you kind of held it together well at the end. Yeah, the 15 seconds was very tough for me. Um, yeah, 30 seconds was a little tough, but 15 seconds, that was hard. That would take a lot of practice for me to get good at shooting that fast. I guess it's easier to do than when you're 6-1 in front. Yeah, that definitely uh, made me a little less nervous, uh, of course. So, yeah, winning um, a bunch of games early on definitely helped uh, ease my nerves, for sure. What does it mean to, to come here in Louisiana Open and, and, and take down the first ever Ultimate Pool USA uh, Women's Open tournament. Um, I'm really excited and proud of myself. Uh, I know my husband's very proud of me, and well, it's been absolutely brilliant to see you uh, run through the field. It's been a brilliant tournament for you. Let's bring out Jordan Chavus, the Ultimate Pool USA president, and hand you the tr the trophy. Our champion, Tiffany Brock. It really has been another brilliant tournament. We have one more trophy to hand out, though. We are going to take it to the break when we come back. It will be the Louisiana Open final.
Welcome back, everybody. It is the final match here of a very enjoyable four days of action from Shreveport, Louisiana. It is the Louisiana Open final. Chris Melling taking on Tyler Steyer. And it will be Chris that will have the opening break. We just saw the lag there as we came back in. He won the lag, and that's could be significant in the way the tournament has played out with the the top players, the big pros in the event. Number of frames that are won from the break is incredibly high. And therefore, the advantage for Chris Melling having the opening break could be huge come the back end of the match. It's still a 50-minute match clock. The only change, it's a race to eight. And the trophy is on the line. And we are underway. And Chris is going to scratch on the opening break, meaning that Tyler, who ran the final six racks of his semi-final with Billy Thorpe from 5-1 down, has the opening opportunity here to essentially make it seven straight runouts from the break. Summer Webb and Stephen Wyatt with you once again for this final. And it's a tough one to call this. It really is. Yeah, and what a great culmination of a weekend. I've thoroughly enjoyed myself. Got to spend a lot of time here in the booth with you, Simon, and it's been great. I can't wait to do it again. But let's look at what's in front of us. Tyler Steyer has had an amazing tournament with a huge comeback in the semifinals. Chris Melling taking a loss early yesterday to Jeff DeLuna, able to come back through the loser's qualification. So much on the line here. There's still plenty of work here in this opening rack for Tyler. Oh, that's beautiful. Really trying to control that absolutely dead weight to deal with the work. The reason I was saying there was plenty of work is that the the five didn't come down the table, and I didn't think he could hold, but he, he played that really well. And he has held just about straight, maybe half a turn short, so he can get up the table. Good shot there. Funny little note here. This is the match that I was uh, wanting to happen in the shootout. Yeah. Um, Darren Appleton put a stop to that one by taking out uh, Chris Melling. And it was interesting, actually. I asked Tyler in an interview afterwards, you know, he got Chris Melling in the final thoughts on it, and he said, you know, he wouldn't want it any other way. So much respect for... Chris and his ability, especially with eight ball, was he an all-round player? But especially with eight ball, that he wants to try and take him down here in the final. And he's going to start off by reverse one out and getting the first one on the board. And uh, uh, Chris is obviously with a, a, a scratch on the break there. It's a tough one, but. He's going to have to hold his composure like I know he can. Uh, probably one of the best <laughs> players to ever touch a, a seven-foot table. It's really incredible to watch him play this entire weekend. And we get to see a little more here. There is Tyler Steyer and his accomplishments so far. Many, many more apart from that. But some of the highlights. Kremlin Cup champion, Texas Open champion, but... Obviously, those two Moscone Cup wins with Team USA. And the race to eight now, uh, eight, just an extended by one game, but still the same match timer. Will we see uh, that shot clock get down is the question. And if Tyler keeps breaking like that, I don't know if we'll see it. He's got some trouble here. 
Yeah, this is far from easy. This is not a good chance. to be able to get out here is definitely going to take uh, some some good shots and some creativity maybe a little luck if he wants the solids the three into the ten and the five is there but I don't think he really wants to take them I think he'd much prefer the stripes not what he wanted that made it even even trickier yeah this is uh this is messier than a two-year-old with a plate of spaghetti <laughs> Oof. still going to continue though very aggressive player is tyler police can get out from anywhere And uh, it looks like the combo and what he's looking at here is the 12 to the 14, which would also essentially um, move that 13 ball if he hits it with pace. It still has a treble ball there in the 10 up top. So this is the beginning of, of a good run here. And the 13 does not pass the 8 ball. So he's still got to bump that ball using the 12. And this is the unknown factor, because when you bump into this ball with it being so close to that bottom rail and other balls around it, if you don't bump into it good, you risk blocking it. I think he came out okay. Yeah, didn't want to get the 13, wanted just the 8 ball, but still so much work to do Tyler looking at the angle that the one ball is going to come off here I almost think he's going to power this and try and hope the one ball breaks the tin up I don't know I'm dead wrong I think he was just planning to he wanted a full ball cannon on it wanted to be able to then hold on the 9 use the 9 to deal with the 10 he still might be able to actually just wonder can he play the nine off the cushion off the rail off the five can he play it direct off the five would want to be a, a very glancing blow how Oof. good is that yeah this out is if he gets there obviously he's one more positional shot to play but if he gets out from here it is ridiculous there's, there's been nothing on the whole way through this. I've been kind of calling for a, a safety shot right at the start of this visit. I think only bad things can happen when you take on layouts like this, but Tyler is showing us that is not true. This is, well, this is a serious out. It really is. How about that? That's really incredible. Yeah, just tap the table, just to acknowledge maybe a touch of fortune. He didn't quite have the control he was looking for, and was just reacting but there's some good shots along the way and Chris being known for being such a creative QS when it comes to these outs I'm sure he shares that respect for what Tyler just did he knows it was a good out and he knows he's gonna have to come with it because Tyler Steyer up 2-0 yeah and he's run eight straight from the break as well let's not forget that semi-final into the final it's it's one thing to say that you know we see a lot of pros do that sort of thing, but that's a lot. You know, eight on the eight on the spin. It's one thing you have got to get the chances. I mean, how often do you get eight chances on the trot? Yeah, and you know, again, you may get that in a whole tournament, but yeah. in two matches back to back, it's an incredible feat. Well, that run is going to come to an end. Is Chris Melling has first chance here in rack number three.
and not the easiest layout. Everything is uh, kind of uh, very close knit to each other. I'm looking at the 14 and the 4. Both those balls uh, do have an available pocket, but it is tricky to get to them. I think Chris may play the 7 here to play the 4, you think? Yeah. And that's really the work done. Now it's just connecting them together. That was the only ball that needed any attention and he had the perfect ball to get there straight away. It's going to be tree topped over this ball. Makes it a little bit more <laughs> difficult to cue. He hit it well. It's amazing to see how smooth he can still deliver the cue ball even when jacked up over the ball like that. Nice little punch into the 12 ball to stay straight on the 6 ball. This has been a good run here. And a good way into the match for Chris Melling. Runs out his first chance off his second break. And he's up and running. It's two racks to one. And when you compare the two run-out racks, Tyler had to work so very hard for his. And Chris made his look extremely easy. Yeah, Chris from Keith Lee. That's uh, very close to Leeds in England. Two times a WPF World Champion. And three times an Ultimate Pool Pro Series Champion. He's also won a couple other titles with Ultimate Pool as well. Champions League, Champion of Champions, but... Most known really for being able to mix it across multiple cue sports. He's been a professional in English 8-ball, American 8-ball. He's been a professional snooker player. He's played Chinese 8-ball. He was part of the Moscone Cup aside for a little while. He's been a Moscone Cup MVP. He really has done an awful lot with the cue in his hand. And he's still doing it now into his mid-40s. Yeah, really a connoisseur of Q-Sports. Beautiful break from Tyler. Look at how empty the center of the table is. That's the first thing that jumps out to me. Wow, what a powerful break. His last layout was tough, and he had to work incredibly hard. This time, it's not so bad. <coughs> He's going to have to go solids, you feel. I don't think he has any choice. I'm just wondering if how much of the 14 he can see, but even if he can, he can't do much with it. So it'll be solids, and the only issue with solids is going to be the 8-ball. And you have to like Tyler to get out here. He risk breaking out the eight ball. How is he going to do it? Does he use the one? Does he do it now? Could do it now. Makes it worse, not better. And that is the risk and reward of moving a ball out like that, especially the eight ball. <laughs> now making this what looked like a, an easy run, now making it twice as difficult. So do you leave it there now? Play the bank? I actually think I may take the one ball at, as my key ball and shoot the eight up in the top Just right-hand corner. Yeah. 
Yeah, I like that. Small gap, but if you get good on the one, you fancy making it because you don't have to move the cue ball too far. You should be moving it pretty much in line the whole way. That and simply trying to minimize making it worse. Um, I feel like if you have a decent shot at it, why try and make it better and make it worse unintentionally? He's set up really well here. He might even be looking at the angle to float the cue ball in between to get close to his work. Yeah, if he lands too high, he's going to have a tough job getting there. So touch low was perfect. That is, that's brilliant. And he couldn't have asked for a better setup here. He's actually got so much angle that he might have to play a little bump on the eight ball here. If he bounces off a, a turn, then he just drops on it. But he can't, I don't think he can just hold. I think he has to just play this little delicate nudge. Yeah, it's beautiful. You called it, Simon. What a phenomenal shot there. And really, again, another picture-perfect run out by Tyler Steyer. Yeah, very, very good, that. Previous run out had problems all the way, and he was just digging hard and, and relying on shot making. That one, clear plans. I tried to deal with it once, couldn't, but had a very clear plan of how he was going to do it again and executed. That really was another very impressive finish from Tyler. And he just keeps himself in front. And Tyler uh, really just embracing. Uh, what he had at the table and making everything work the way he wanted it. Chris, uh, with the opening break, had the chance to be the one who held serve. A tough scratch in that opening rack. And now he's the one trailing. It's three to one. Sticking with the second ball break. Good one again. Yeah, worked out fairly well for him. Solids look good apart from the six. That needs attention. Stripes don't really have a, a problem ball. Just the pattern. Just the way he's looking. It feels like he's eyeing up the, the solids, but I, I really like the stripes here. I, I I agree with you, with the only exception being the opening shot. It's not really the ball that I want to take first. Do you think he can pinch the pocket and get across? I suppose he can play for the the 15 in the side if he can't. Yeah, that's, that's what, what he's he got did. for. That's a good call. <laughs> at our crowd in the background there. Had a wonderful crowd all weekend here in Shreveport. Lots of spectators, some pool players, some not. Yeah, it's been really good. <coughs> Straight's not brilliant, and he's, well, he's got just enough. He just wants to force it up towards the... 12, that's the one. It's just a little off angle here. Yeah, he wanted to be a bit higher, so a bit closer to the 12, really, but... Oh, that didn't come off. He didn't hit that as well as he can. Now, I think he can see it, but man, is it thin. And I think if he plays it, I think his cue ball is going to have to travel up and down. And he can't really fight with that. Chris Melling taking a situation that I wouldn't want to be in and making it look pretty easy. Wow. Uh, three to two. Tyler Steyer still holding a one game lead and will be breaking 
And we've crowned two champions already this weekend. Jaden Holt and Michelle McDermott winning their respective divisions. One more name is going to be added to the history books. Yeah, and it's... Uh, well, Darren Appleton won the shootout on Thursday, but I was going to make the point that Chris Manning won the inaugural Ultimate Pool title, winning the Champions League about four years ago, and it would be some story if he was to win the first ever Ultimate Pool USA title as well, but caveat with that with the fact that Darren Appleton already has the shootout. This is very true. Uh, apologies for missing out on Dynamite. There's been so much action this yeah. weekend that it's hard to follow everything. Dynamite really played great and really enjoyed seeing him have a little bit of comeback. Oh, no. And this is what Chris needed. If you're rooting for Chris Melling here, then you're feeling really fortunate for him. Ball in hand after a big break. And how do you like this run out? The 12 ball, his only issue. Yeah, what's he got planned for us here? Why well, he was lining up there. I just wonder if he's trying to get past the eight ball here. He's trying to go into it from that. I just wondered if he was thinking about just trying to leave it on the left-hand rail past the eight ball, and then he was going to use the come across the top of the 12 to pop the 15. That's that's actually exactly what I saw. Um, and would have been a fairly easy shot had the angle been right. Yeah, and he's got the 13 over the pocket as well as a nice kind of next ball if, if required. He saw it differently. He tried to go into it. And time almost getting the better of him. Already used his extension realizing quickly that the shot clock was dwindling down, made a phenomenal shot to the side pocket, and broke out the 12. No matter how many times you see players like this come to the table, you can't help but think how absolutely incredible this is to watch. But it's just not that easy. It's just such an elite level. I mean... There are times when you get great players out there and they make a, a ton of runouts and you're kind of getting good splits, good leaves, but there's been this is one really tough layout. You know, Tyler's had two really you know, probably even tougher his first one was ridiculous. The so next one was, was very similar to this sort of level. And the guys are making it look easy. Well, if, if you could ever ask for anything in the finals of this tournament, it would be to see it three three with 33 minutes left on the clock in this race to eight. Both guys showing why they deserve to be the champion. Yeah, a long way to go. Both players need five, and as you say, 33 minutes is a long time. Especially at the pace that they're playing at. Chris playing slightly faster than Tyler. Their natural paces are slightly different, aren't they? Tyler's natural pace is gonna is to use a lot more of the thirty seconds, whereas Chris is he'll use it early if he needs to, but once he's in line it's it's just bang bang bang. He's he's just very, very quick. Yeah, he's uh, definitely a rhythm player, is how we would call it here. Um once he gets the feel and he's in stroke, it's uh he's like a freight train, hard to stop. Something caught his eye. Not sure what that was. Heard something behind him. And a uh, referee just sorting everything out here. And I think somebody just shouted something out on his his backswing there. Uh, 
that's all sorted now. Just some disturbance in the crowd, but it's all done. And Chris here has a ball down, several balls down. And what do you like here, Simon, as far as stripes or solids? I like the solids. Just get straight to work. Easy. Controlled opener. Oh, no, as he already has. He saw that shoulder slump. Does it go? No. I can tell that by his body language. Now I don't like the solids at all. I like the stripes now. Yeah, the, the three ball is really in a bad spot here. Now, I, I don't know... I don't know how likely it is that he'll have a shot afterwards, but the one in the side carries two rail position to, to bump that three ball. It's just a question of whether or not he would have anything afterwards. There's a possibility here that he's looking at the seven to connect to the three with the breakout. This is not easy. Well, is he going to play it here? He might. Oh, that's not going to work. Rough. It's, you have to say, for a player of Chris's level, that opening shot was just a touch on the careless side. He kind of maybe he rushed it. We were talking about how quick he plays, but you know, he was down and playing it quickly. But it, that's not uncommon for him. But just a touch on the the careless side, and it may cost him getting out here. Well, and this is not an easy shot. The natural path um, is really putting him stuck into that corner. Maybe not a scratch, but it's too too much to risk, I would think. What else has he got, though? I, he is lining up. A, I was thinking you'd make the cut. You're going to get the, the nine half ball, and, and you're obviously asking for some form. But This bank here is on if he can hit it good. Oh. So for the first time in the match, we don't see a player run out off the break. <coughs> and not for lack of trying, he was deathly close to that three ball in the top left corner. Tyler here looking to take full advantage. Making it look easy. Keeping it simple. He'll have no issues here. Done. Always fairly simple task when your opponent misses their last ball, but still got to get yourself the right side of the the run out, and he's been flawless throughout. Yeah, maybe got a touch straight here, but again, it's, it's we're nitpicking at that point. And maybe being that that straight caused him to get on the rail, but this eight ball should fall. Good run out from that position. Tyler Steyer taking the lead once again. And Chris with an opportunity to get in the lead for the first time in the match. Just a little careless on his first shot. Really hurt him all the way down. Yeah, that, and that's what will frustrate Chris a lot. I know he doesn't show much out there, but it will frustrate him a lot. He prides himself on, you know, making sure of 
both sort of finishes and he says as he said in his interview after the semi you know if he gets eight chances in this match he he can't uh, can't really complain well there's one that's got away it means he's going to need a ninth chance in the match yeah and playing against tyler here uh, it, nine nine chances is uh, it's tough tyler's played immaculate all weekend from the very beginning of the event the Louisiana shootout in that amazing six red shoot, six ball shootout with Cleve Thompson to start off the week. And here we are in the finals, and there's his chance. Yeah, and straight in for Tyler. Huge frustration. Doesn't show much emotion out there. Neither player does actually. Instantly disgust on Tyler's face here. Gets it all wrong. And I think uh, Chris, uh, with a, a little smirk on his face, not expecting to get a chance at the table. Tyler's break has been uh, pretty good for the most part all week. And just an unfortunate scratch. Really getting through the ball nicely, making it sing without really hitting it. Oh, and you can't ask for a better layout, a better opportunity, and a better chance to tie the game back up. Chris Melling just the eight ball away from doing just that. And with us, in it goes. And we're all square once again. As we, we are tracking towards the halfway point in the match. Both players still need four. So really, in a, in a perfect world, we may get down to around the five minute mark of the match unless we get into some sort of safety battle. Yeah, a lot of Chris's matches have gone very quick this week. Tyler's have been, certainly today, he's had to go deep quite a lot. Deep into the, the final ten minutes and he's had to work hard. And, uh, you know, Chris has been the player who's probably been the most consistent on this TV table, I would think. Um, yeah, there's been a few out there, though, wasn't there, that's, uh, that have been very solid all week. Yeah. Um, in the match against DeLuna that he lost, he... Didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, he didn't do anything wrong. Other than, you know, he hit a couple of breaks where he got unlucky, he hit a couple of breaks poorly, and that was really the match for him. And, of course, uh, Billy Thorpe um, was playing immaculate on this TV table up until the big comeback of Tyler Steyer. Yeah, still quite amazed to see that. 5-1 down and running six straight. And Tyler uh, really earning his shot into this final match. Um, it was no easy feat. And hats off to Billy Thorpe for a very strong third, fourth finish. Tyler here trying to determine how he wants to get into this rack. It's not a terrible shot. Yeah, you can play the two and, and bump the 12. Probably the better option. Could play the 10 off the 6, but I don't see the benefit. 6 might go, move the 9 and make a mess. It's fairly natural just to move the, the 12 up the table a touch. 
Yeah, and really uh, the, the big question in this rack is just going to be that 13 ball. Um, it doesn't really have a, a way to the pocket, and the one ball I think is just too close to the rail to play that uh, carom shot. So it's all going to be about how he gets to this 13. He can slide down there now. No, he had just the wrong angle, really, because he had to hold past the nine there. I don't think he'd have got the pace on to get down the table. On here, he's got the 11 ball, and I imagine he'll play shape on the 15. It's actually okay. He's playing to the nine ball. Yeah, he wants to hold the high angle on the 15, and then he can slide down and almost target the the one with the cue ball. Totally makes sense here. Just wants to uh, have a, have a thin cut on the 15. Queuing very low. I think that's going to be a, a great starting point for this next shot. The speed control will tell the story. Needs to keep going. It's not the best of lines. And maybe a little shy there on the speed, but the eight ball does go in the side pocket past the six. So if he needed to get his cue ball up table just simply because of the angle, he could. It's going to be very hard to cut that ball and control the cue ball the way he needs to. Ideally, he wants to shoot the eight in the top right. And would have had a shot at it. Unfortunately, probably the first missed ball we've seen in 20 games. Yeah, it's been a while. First error in the match for Tyler Steyer. <coughs> and Chris here playing the smart shot. Look at that. How do you hit this ball? Just as a reminder for anybody who's not familiar with international eight ball rules, you must not take an intentional foul in a situation like this. No rolling one of your opponent's balls up on the eight ball because it is a loss of frame. Yeah, almost impossible to get out of that, but you have to make a genuine attempt, which you did. Still not that easy for Chris Melling here. Yeah, Chris with a, a little uh, scratch of the head saying, oh, I got what I wanted, but what do I do with it? He's probably a little bit annoyed that the three ball's gone down into that corner. The three ball may well have been his choice as a, a breakout ball. Now, um, what's... I mean, Chris has a plan, but what's wrong with uh, shooting the three and making the 13 here? Absolutely nothing. That would absolutely absolutely leave you in great shape I feel like uh, opening up that pocket for your your solids again Chris is Chris is the pro but I think he missed an opportunity there to give himself a shot at running out on his next go at the table couldn't get the, the side on I still think it's the right shot I think you just you just play it. And actually, I think he did that first to open up those other balls first. I think he's going to play it now. I really do. I think he's a little bit worried about playing it. But then if that's the case, you play it off the three. So just brush the three, pop the 15, sorry, the 13, and you've got the eight ball covered. And... and he now has decided that that is the shot, and I, I know what you're saying. He may well have been just developing one of his other balls first. Yes, but the way he kind of 
went about that sort of facial expression. It tells me it might have been a rare occasion where Chris didn't see it. Certainly, maybe he, he's so good at the kick shots. Maybe he just did not want to give Tyler the, the kick shot opportunity. Absolutely. Well, and, and and it is a lot easier to see things sometimes um, when you have uh, you know all the different views of the cameras in your face. So we'll chalk that one up to pure luck on my end. Well, I just think that the shot that Tyler's just played is exactly why Chris didn't want to play it. It was he didn't think he could stop him having the two cushion at it. Yeah, he came disgustingly close to making yeah. that ball. And I think uh, here, what do you really have to shoot at? He's going to knock the eight ball into an awkward place. And I don't know if that's awkward enough. I've seen a shot very similar to this. If Tyler can play this with top English and hit the two ball square, he can follow the cue ball into the eight and just bump it into the pocket. The two ball just has to get out of the way. I think the two ball hits the, the point and comes back. We'll see. He was definitely trying it, and to your point, that's exactly what happened. The two ball did hit the point, and oh, it was almost disastrous for Chris or for Tyler. Well, Chris still he has to just I think stand up and make one hit. He's got the three in the side and that wins the rack. And he's going to take the the seven to the top. Same deal, but it's got a little bit of a safety net. As in, he wouldn't have left the eight on, but pot in comfortably well and this rack here because of the situation we were in the time looked really well but we're under the 19 minute mark and we're still four to four this has been almost seven minutes elapsed in this rack alone yeah it only takes one rack to slow the clock right down and make it get very much involved in the match yeah i don't have a horse in the race i if i could i'd, I'd want both of these guys to win but I would not be mad at a six ball shootout. Well, that would be fun. And what a story it would be for Tyler Steyer. Oh, oh. Chris, Chris stayed down on that one. <laughs> he wasn't sure. He was trying to pinch the pocket. He wasn't like it was a you know, a terrible shot. He just thought he might have overdone it for a second. Yeah, when that one left his cue stick, he was very unsure. No mistakes with a simple eight ball. And he is in front, five to four. <laughs> Fascinating how this one is poised right now. And this is what Ultimate Pool brings to the table, the excitement and the drama and the stories that are going to get told on this table in the next 18 minutes. An incredible weekend, and there's still <laughs> there's still so much in such a short period of time. Yeah, there is still so much that can happen here. It's a lifetime in ultimate pool terms. <coughs> And Tyler looking to get back to that even zone. He can't have the advantage yet. Chris Melling holding the lead by one game. He's going to have to win this rack and then hope for a mistake by Chris. Oh, no. Scratched again and straight in again, just the opposite side of the table. Brink just letting him down at the wrong time here for Tyler's diet. And quite possibly the best spread I've seen. Wow. Yeah, this one might not take very long. And that is the ebb and flow of this format. One rack, seven minutes long, the next... A minute and 30 seconds. If the six ball passes to the corner, then this one is going to be over in the next 25 seconds. But if it doesn't, it might be an extra 10, 15 seconds or so. And Chris is going to make sure that it goes. 
because I think he's going to play the four ball here. Really opening up the pocket for that six. Yeah, this is this is absolutely brutal for Tyler. Looking at a chance to tie it back up and what an opportunity for Chris and he took it and now he is in the lead six to four in just a matter of seconds. Wow. Yeah, that was the perfect layout really. Unfortunately for Tyler it was also a scratched break. And now he's two behind. And it is Chris Melling to break. Tyler, though, was 5 1 behind in the semi finals and turned it round. So he won't be too worried at this stage. He just needs. Well, in his own mind, four more chances, one way or another, whenever they come. And, and really for Tyler, just the opportunity to swing the momentum. He just needs the one opportunity and then some good playing could uh, give Chris Melling a little bit of nerves, maybe enough to make a mistake. In goes a solid and a chance for Chris again. Bit more work in this one than the last, although there was very little in the last. This is still a decent enough layout. The six ball, the issue for solids. But still, I think solids are the way. Yeah, I think you just don't want to contend with that 9, 10, 13 area. A little bit too much to have to mess with. Whereas you have a good ball in the three or the seven to move that six. No, seven ball. He's not got the angle for it now. Doesn't even have to move it. He's yeah. just going to play it to the corner. What a beautiful shot. Natural to get there straight away and plays it, lands touch of angle going up the table so just has to hold here but he's got the three at the top so it's all nice oh yeah this is going to be a a beautiful run out for Chris if he can keep it together here you definitely want to be the first one to the hill have that big advantage So smooth. A little surprised he didn't try and deal with the four. Maybe just felt he didn't quite have the right angle. So gonna have to come back for it now. And that was a beautiful uh, little stun shot there. Not the easiest to control speed wise, but he hit it well. A little short, just about gets there to make it relatively comfortable. A couple of turns less and it wouldn't have quite been the same story, but still needs to be made. And really taking the time to give that shot, again, the respect that it deserves. Can't take it for granted. And Chris Melling to the hill. It is seven to four. This is the finals of the Louisiana Open. And what a weekend it has been. Lots of great matches from the very beginning of the week on Thursday in the shootout. We've gotten to see a lot of great pool. And the culmination of that is happening right here, right now. And Chris Melling just one rack away from holding up the trophy and getting a nice little cash grab as well. 
Yeah, he certainly is. Although, Tyler will be thinking to himself, I did six straight in the semi-final. All I have to do here is four straight. The problem has been the break. The last two racks, top left, top right, needs to put that right here. I'm wondering if we're going to see him take a little bit of power off. Again, both were uh, slight kicks, but held the line to the pocket. So maybe a step back in power will put him where he needs to be. That's a better cue ball. And balls down all over the place. Well, that uh, 15 ball just rolling far enough to really mess thing up, things yeah. up. <laughs> if the 15 stops one roll less from where it is now, well, Tyler would just about be getting down on the 8 ball now. He's, uh, I think in turn now, uh, you have to take the stripes. Yeah. The 15 ball goes in the top right. And Tyler just needing to navigate his opening shot. Is he carrying himself up to come down on the, the solid still? I think he is. Yeah, big shot on the two. Now he must see something that we do not see. Well, the, the, the reason he wants this way round is that the three is good to get onto the five. But f he, from where he was, the three was the obvious first ball for, for solids. That's why he's taken, taken on the much tougher ball there. So really just taking the tough shot so you can have the easier shot later. Yeah, it's like one tough shot to, to give you a great chance to run out. He'll be disappointed with that, though. He wanted the full ball on the 15. He would have just hold him, held him on a better angle. Now he's going to have to really work the cue ball. Yeah, taking a look at the angle there, it looks like he's going to want to go down to this bottom rail and spin almost between the 9 and the 1. That's scary. Yeah, just wanted to slide by it. That's awkward. Slide by it or full ball so it goes towards the center. He got about 3 quarter, so now he's in trouble. When this is the shot for Tyler, he knows what kind of firepower his opponent has. He understands that a miss here could very well send him home. And it will be a miss. It's a wide. And Tyler will go back to his chair, believing that his shots required in this championship are over he will expect Chris Melling to run out here for the title and Chris really the only navigation he has to do is just making sure he has a good shot on the 15 everything else is very open and available you can see him there very deliberately kind of mapping out his finish almost visibly you don't see him do that too often Really wants to make sure it is the tournament run out here. And you never expect somebody like Chris Melling to show nervousness, but maybe just a little bit there. It was just a case of he does have one bit of work to do, I think, and that was just a case of just trying to make sure how he wanted to do it. I mean, there is plenty of room for the 15, but that means you just need a good angle to get there, and he's going to use the the 10 to do it. And it, it may not matter much, but just 30 seconds away from that shot clock. I think he doesn't want it to sneak up on him. So he would like to finish this run before that comes into play. It's not going to. Well, he's a little bit on the straight side here. He may not get too close to the nine. Happy enough just to accept distance. And Chris here, feeling good. As he knows that he is just one ball away 
from holding up the trophy in just a few minutes and beating Tyler Steyer in the final of the Louisiana Open. And there it is. Chris Melling is the champion. Brilliant performance all the way through. Had to do it the hard way. Had to do it through the loser's side. And he's dug deep. Got himself back into the winner's side. And he is going to walk away as the Louisiana Open champion. We'll crown him after this short break. Welcome back down to the arena for the final time here in Louisiana. It has been a brilliant four days, plenty of very enjoyable action, plenty of drama on the table and a brilliant tournament all the way through. And it's come down to two absolutely incredible players to put on a show in the final. Let's hear it for both players. It was an incredible final and there has to be a runner up, unfortunately. On this occasion, it is Tyler Starr. Let's get him up for a few words. Tyler, come on up. Tyler, hard luck. Um, it, a brilliant run through the field, a, a brilliant tournament for yourself, but it just sort of went wrong in the middle there, and it just Chris just got away from it at the end. Yeah, I mean, uh, even with the scratch on the break, I made two mistakes. So if I get rid of those mistakes, it's still 6-6 six, six with Chris breaking, right? So even though that happened, uh, made some other mistakes that didn't allow me to get that close to the final. So. Yeah, I mean, it's a brilliant run, and you say the couple of scratches in there, a couple of mistakes, but how much have you enjoyed um, Ultimate Pool USA, everything that's gone on here, and everything that comes with, with Ultimate Pool USA? Yeah, I mean, for my first tournament, uh, happy to be in the final. Uh, I learned a lot. Um, been a little bit since I played eight ball, but it, glad to be back, and I'm looking forward to the next event for sure. It's a great, great format, and had a good time. Yeah, well, congratulations. <laughs> well, congratulations on putting on a good show for us. We can't wait to see you back again, Tyler. Well, it has been a brilliant run through, but it is Chris Manning that is going to take the title. Let's get him up for a few words before we crown him. Chris, congratulations. Uh, we've been here before. We've done this a few times, but it's uh, the first time we've done it on the uh, American table. First time you've won a title here on the, the small American table for a while. Brilliant performance. Yeah, we're really happy with my performance. It started off, obviously, scratch on the break. It got kicked in the, in the corner pocket, and I thought, well, here we go. Not again. And then, obviously, the way Tyler breaks, I mean... He deafens me when he breaks that hard. Um, it was a little bit unfortunate with a couple of scratches on the break, and you know I took my chances when I, when I got gifted them. But basically, I mean, he put seven balls on the break, one of the breaks, and 
you know, when you're doing that and you scratch, it's it's very difficult. I mean, you, you, you said you had a, a couple of really good chances off Tyler's break and a few off your own, but you also put together some brilliant finishes. The way you see the game, the vision to make the game really easy, it really is a treat for us all to watch. Yeah, obviously it's slightly different when you're playing on the bar box um, diamond tables. Obviously, with me playing a lot of Chinese eight ball, your patterns have to be unbelievably good on them tables. So, slightly different on here. You don't mind leaving balls up the up the rails and taking long shots with power, where obviously you can't do it on the Chinese tables. You've got to be so accurate. Um, but yeah, delighted with the performance. Um, just like to say a big thanks to everybody who's turned up. Everybody been a great crowd, great great event, and uh, can't wait for the next one. And uh, I'll just get a word, you, you obviously won so many titles in so many different disciplines, but you really do, do have a sort of natural home with eight ball, whether it be Chinese, whether it be English, whether it be American. The way you see the game, the patterns, it, it really is incredible to watch. Yeah, I, I don't know how I do it sometimes, I'll be totally honest with you. Um, I seem to have a decent record when I come to America. I, I usually do all right, uh, especially on the bar box tables, but you do need a lot of luck as well And when you're playing somebody of Tyler's calibre. I mean, you just need the luck on the break, really. I mean, it could have been him that won eight four. Yeah, well, well said. And let's get uh, Jordan Chavouche, the ultimate poor USA president, out to hand you the trophy. Chris Melling is your champion. It really has been an incredible four days here in Louisiana. The first event for Ultimate Pool USA, the first of many. We will be back very soon for our next event. Watch this space for the dates, for the locations. But from Louisiana, We'll say goodbye for now and we will see you again.